March Madness has hit Athens, just not quite in the way you would expect in this season of basketball. We've got some baseball action coming to you live from Bob Wren Stadium. It is the Ohio Bobcats and the Central Michigan Chippewas. I am Ethan Sargent, joined by Wes Mickey. Ellie Metzler is down on the sidelines. Should be a fun one today. What are your thoughts on this uh, opening action, Wes? Should be a good game. Uh, we saw yesterday two very different games. One where Ohio dominated, one where Central Michigan stuck it out to the end. So we'll see how this third game, the rubber match, plays out today. Uh, hopefully some good baseball on the way. Very exciting. I mean, yeah, you, you said it yesterday. We had two very contrasting baseball games. The Ohio offense exploding in game number two to that 18-3 to victory. And now for all the marbles here in game number three, looking to take a series win technically back home with them. Of course, this series yeah. was meant to be uh, played up at Mount Pleasant, but due to some inclement weather, they switched the series. So Central Michigan is actually the home team today. So the Bobcats are visiting, even though they're on their home stadium. They'll be batting, and um, they'll be at the top of the innings, of course. Uh, kind of adds a little bit of a fun twist <laughs> onto this matchup. It is cold. It is it chilly is. here in Athens, about 35 degrees, wind blowing to our right and kind of back in towards the players. It is definitely chilly out there. But a lot of the players got some Under Armour and looks like they're ready to go. So let's take a look at some of the players to watch for today. We'll start with the home team, technically, in the Central <laughs> Michigan Chippewas, Jacob Donahue. He's been a monster at the plate. Yeah, he's been huge. 361 batting average this season, uh, that 449 on base percentage. He's been a sluggy machine this season so far. He's played well. He's a huge part of that uh, machine that Chippewa's offense is. Uh, they look for him to get active today and keep hot. Yeah, and a lot of that offense really motors through Donahue. And you could say the same thing about the Ohio Bobcats player to watch, Gideon Antle batting 447 on the year. Yeah, huge for him, 478 on base percentage as well. Uh, those seven homers, obviously the big fly has been his best friend this year, 29 RBIs as well. So hopefully he can keep that hot swing going, uh, stay hot at the plate, and power the Bobcats for the victory. Yeah, eight twelve slugging percentage is extremely impressive by uh, by all intents and purposes, and he is so much of what makes that Ohio Bobcat offense tick. For a little bit more on Ohio Bobcat head coach Craig Moore and his thoughts on today's game, we go down to the sidelines and Ellie Metzler. Thanks, Ethan. After yesterday's game, I asked Coach Moore what he wants to see from his team today. He said he told his guys that everything that was done today, good or bad, is over. He also said we have to get ready for tomorrow and come back with the same practice, purpose, and intent. Yeah, we'll see if they can do that. Thank you very much, Ellie. We'll hear more from her a little bit later on in the matchup. We're getting real close here to first pitch. Uh, should be a fun one here. Very exciting. You know, thanks for taking some time. Maybe you got March Madness on one screen. You got the Ohio Bobcats and the Chippewas on the other. I know that the tourney is going on right now, and... Well, the madness is always thriving here in Athens, and I think we're going to see some of that today. What else do you think, Wes, is, is going to be key? Obviously, we saw two just extremely different games play out yesterday. Who's going to be able, do you think, to get the edge in this matchup? Well, I think the, the wind and the cold factor do play uh, to the Chippewa's advantage in this one. Obviously, six inches of snow hit Mount Pleasant uh, this weekend. Obviously, that's why the game was moved to Athens. I think the Bobcats can get used to that cold. Obviously, you mentioned that the Under Armour weather they're wearing, the Under yeah. Armour gear they're wearing uh, is going to play a big factor. Um, I just don't know how the Bobcats are going to be able to defend uh, the cold attack they're going to have to go after with the Chippewas, especially being what a game that they're used to. The Chippewas used to a cold game, a colder yeah. environment. Uh, how do the Bobcats factor in? Hopefully the right way uh, so we get a good game here, but we'll see. Yeah, it is. It, you know, if it weren't for that, that bitter cold, it would be just a gorgeous day, not mm -hmm. a cloud in the sky, really. Um, and you got that wind blowing in as well. So, yeah, the weather's going to play a factor today. Yesterday, we really saw the Bobcats adjust. That first game, 6-1, I was speaking to Josh Herner, who um, called the games yesterday. He was telling me about how the Bobcats continued to get behind the count in game number one. 6-1, they lost. They kept going down 0-1, 0-2 in counts, and it forced them to miss things. And then in that second game, to Josh said that they started adjusting. They they started pushing forward, getting ahead in counts, and making good contact. And I think that that's going to be key today for the Bobcats. If they want to win this game, they got to get ahead of the count. And we'll see if they can do that. It's going to be a very interesting matchup. I'm excited. This is going to be a good game. You know, two teams that are still fighting for positioning. Of course, yeah. <laughs> everything changes today <laughs> with, with, you know, the plans. You think you're traveling up, up to 
to uh, Mount Pleasant. Instead, it's the Chippewas on the home team coming here to um, play this game, technically, at home. <laughs> Well, we'll take a quick break here as we're just about getting ready for the anthem. When we come back, we've got baseball action live from Bob Wren. Back at Bob Bren, just about ready for baseball action here between Ohio and Central Michigan. Wes, let's go through the starting lineups. First for the visiting Ohio <laughs> Bobcats. Oh, Paulie Mancino uh, leading off, playing in right. J.R. Nelson at short, batting second. Gideon Antle, as I mentioned, that big bat. Gideon Antle back in center, batting third. A.J. Roush batting fourth, playing left. Bryce Smith playing first and at batting fifth. Uh, batting sixth, Nick Dolan playing third base. Batting seventh, Jackson Cothran and catching. Batting eighth, Taylor Gill, the DH for today. And then batting ninth, the second baseman, Billy Adams. And looking ahead to Central Michigan, leadoff center fielder, Jake Brill. Batting second, the first baseman, Danny Westenfield. Batting third, right fielder, Jacob Donahue. Batting fourth, designated hitter, Cole Prout. Batting eighth, left fielder, Mikey Murphy, batting sixth, the catcher, Spencer Verberg. Batting seventh, shortstop, Bryson Webb. Batting eighth, the second baseman, Nick Dardis. And batting ninth, the third baseman, Eli Stewart. Yeah, very similar lineups. Uh, not too many changes from either yeah. teams and yesterday. Let's look at the pitching for the Chippewas here, and it'll be Evan Waters who gets the start. It's his second of the season. It'll be his 10th appearance. He's coming in with a 4.86 ERA and 16 and two-third innings pitched. He's allowed... 15 hits and 10 runs, and he's got 18 strikeouts with a 238 opponent's batting average. And we are ready to go. So we'll start things off with Mancino leading it off for the Bobcats. First pitch of the day from Waters is low and outside. Ball number one. A loud and rowdy um, <laughs> dugout. We were talking earlier today with the PA announcer here, Cade Williamson. He said that the Central Michigan dugout is the funniest dugout, opposing dugout he's ever seen come here. That's up the middle. It's going to be a tight play into the shortstop, and it is caught. Nice little move there from Dardis. 
Darnis, excuse me, he makes that play. And couldn't beat it out, did Mancito. J.R. Nelson now up to the plate. He's probably the Bobcats' second best hitter. You know, we talked about how good Antle's been, and his numbers are off the charts west, but J.R. Nelson's no slouch either. He's been great. Yeah, 360 batting average, 417 on base percentage. He's obviously found his way on base many a times. I think another big factor for today is going to be the cold weather, how it affects players hitting. Uh, you get that stinger in your hands. Yeah. It hurts for a little while, so extra motivation to find the barrel. Yeah, cold is just a concept for J.R. Nelson. Yeah. He's rocking the short sleeves. <laughs> Fouled the first pitch off. 0-1 the count. And he went for a bunt. That's popped high in the air. And both the catcher, Verberg, and Weston fell over at third base. Made a run at it, but it kind of fell right in between them. So a little bit of a lucky break there for Nelson. And he'll get another crack at it here. 0-2 now is the count. So far, it's been efficient from Waters, just five pitches. Yeah, getting ahead and counts, big factor. Yeah, we talked about that in the open. It's where the Bobcats struggled offensively in game number one yesterday. They were able to adjust, but today, I mean, obviously can't really say much about that first at-bat for Mancino. Yeah. But Nelson here down 0-2, or now 1-2, excuse me, after that, that ball on that last pitch. That one is just a bit inside, so 2-2. Two and two. He's worked the count back even. Bobcats, not not the biggest team in the world to draw walks. No, they, they do not draw walks particularly often. Just three on the season for Nelson if he can work it. He does have six strikeouts. And he'll just get a piece of that one to stay alive. Two and two is the count to J.R. Nelson, who will be lining up at shortstop when the Bobcats enter the field. That was a nice foul off, too. That Very nice. In on his hands, just in the corner of the zone. Can't really get to it. Just fouled away. Live to see another pitch. Yeah, and that one is well outside. Three and two. It's been a great at-bat here from Nelson. He's fought off a couple tough pitches from Waters. And now the count is full. Waters will have to bring his best stuff here. I'd assume off-speed again. The payoff. It was off-speed. It's going to be a chipped grounder to first. It's a tight play, and... Well, he's safe. Yeah, safe. Waters dropped the ball. Wow. I mean, it, it was a, that was a weird one. Waters grabbed it off the front. Nelson ran it out as he should. It seemed like there was a little bit of a miscommunication between the first baseman, uh, Dolan, or excuse me, not Dolan, Stewart and Waters. I'm not sure what happened there. But in any case, it is a run. And I think that the, the umpire is going to talk about this. I, I, it's a weird one because the ball, he definitely got the tag on, but the ball came out. Yeah, I would say if he was in the lane uh, while the runners are trying to move, yeah. it's the runners to have. But he also kind of pushed a little bit there. We saw, yeah, yeah, there we was saw a, little Nelson, bit of contact. a little yeah, bit there, of extension. There definitely was some contact, and he, he will be called safe. So I'm not sure what they're going to score that. Uh, we'll have to take a look in a minute what they end up scoring that, if it's an error, if it's a infield hit. I'm not I, sure you can I, rule I that a hit. I, I was going to say, <laughs> I don't think you can rule that a hit either. But it's a runner on base for the Bobcats' best hitter in Gideon Antle here. Up to the plate. We were gushing about his numbers earlier. 1284 OPS, which is just a criminal number. That one is just a bit outside. Ball number one. He's been so Two good at working into counts, too. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, we've seen a lot of Bobcat hitters try and find their pitch early and just take a hack at it. I think Antle's been so good at just waiting, waiting, waiting for that one pitch. And when he gets, he pounces. That one's just a little low. Two and oh. Nelson's got a healthy lead off of first. We'll see if he makes any steal attempts. He's five for five on the year with stolen bases. So high rate of success over Leads there. Leads the team as well. Yeah. Here comes the 2-0. It's cut on. This will be a this is a potential double play ball. It bounces and it gets away. Everybody's safe. Everybody's safe. Yeah, that, and look, I'll give Dirtis a little bit of a, a Dardis a little bit of a pass there because it was a slow chopper. It was not going to be an easy play, and Antle is quick, and he made him work for it. In the end, the throw was off and away. And now here in the first, the Bobcats have a little bit of a run going. Runners on first and second. You've got Nelson on second, Antle on first, and now the cleanup hitter, A.J. Roush, is up to the plate. He'll cut on one and foul it back over our heads here in the press box and out of the stadium on the Onto the street behind us. 
And now Waters is in a little bit of trouble here. Can't really find the strike zone. He's had a few now. That one's cut on. So quickly ahead, Waters bouncing back here in this at-bat. 0-2 the count quickly to A.J. Roush, the Olin Tangy Liberty grad just up the road in Columbus. Something we've seen Waters struggle with is after he had that early quick five strikes yep. and five pitches, he struggled to find that zone again with the fastball. And see if Roush can just take advantage. Just outside, that was close. Pretty uh, solid frame there by Verberg, but it was not enough to sway the umpire. It was, I think, just a little bit outside. Didn't quite catch the edge of the plate. So one and two the count now to A.J. Roush. Here comes a pitch from Waters. Cut on and just fouled back. Count Roush remains one alive. and two. Yeah, staying alive. And we've seen that a couple of times. We saw Nelson have that battle of an at-bat where, you know, two or three times he could have been out. And in the end, you know, he, he grounded out. And honestly, the Bobcats this inning, it was, you know, probably – you'll probably score that an infield hit for Antle. And then Nelson with the, with the one to – I don't even know what you call that, but he got <laughs> on base. And now the count is two and two. The Bobcats have been patient at the plate early. They've, like you said, Wes, they've waited for their pitches. They've waited for their spots. And now the count is back even again. Two and two the count. There's a cut and a miss. Nice off-speed pitch there from Waters. Looked like it was a curve breaking back, and it fooled Roush. So the count, or excuse me, that is out number two. Roush will go back to the dugout, and that will bring up Smith to the plate. Runners on first and second. That is inside. Did it catch him? It did. So Bryce Smith, rocking that great mustache. We were talking about that pregame. He takes his base, and now the bases are jacked. And Nick Dolan will come to the plate. That's not always the easiest thing to take a pitch like that. No, it was weather. right. It was like you said, right on those hands. <laughs> yep. It didn't hit. It wasn't much, but you know, it's all it takes in baseball. And now, with two outs, the Bobcats have runners on the bases. Three of them, to be exact. And there's potential in this inning, and that one is a good pitch inside there. Strike one to Dolan from Waters. Nick Dolan's been a victim of that strikeout a lot this year. 12 Ks on the season, only four walks. So looking to put one in play, keep this inning alive for the Bobcats. He's batting 257 on the year, and there's another nice pitch. Got the speed past Nolan. Oh, and two is the count. Waters trying to work his way out of some early trouble. He's going fastball, fastball here. I assume off speed has to come. The 0-2. Cut on and fouled back. Went back to the fastball. Yeah, he did. So I think it'll be interesting to see if he decides to switch it up here and go off speed. Fastball, fastball, fastball here to start <laughs> to start that run out. It's aggressive. Yeah, it, very <laughs> aggressive. It, looked, it worked on the first two pitches. Here's the 0-2. There's the off-speed, and it was just outside. It was a good pitch, just a little outside. So now 1-2. and two. Dolan back in the box. Pitch clock at 12. There's another foul ball. That'll just about, once again, over our heads right here in the box. Yeah, nearly <laughs> right into Wes's hands. And... Dolan staying alive. The Bobcats have really, I think, above anything, they have made Ethan, or excuse me, Evan Waters work for every single at bat here. And that one's high. It's a great take. It is a really good take. You, you know, some hitters love those high fastballs to, as it gives you that extra power, but a good take there from Dolan. Especially after you've seen a couple off speed mm -hmm. pitches in mm -hmm. a row, you see that fastball high. Yep. Hard to not rip on that one. But it was very smart. Hitting from Dolan. Here's the 2-2. And there's the strikeout looking. Just caught the edge of the inside corner. And Evan Waters gets out of trouble in the first. Bobcats leave the bases loaded. We're through the top of the first. Here come the Chippewas to the plate after the break.
Back at Bob Wren, Bobcats defending, technically, home, uh, home diamond. Of course, Central Michigan's the home team today, so they will be batting here in the bottom of the inning. Pitching today for the Bobcats, starting off with Blake Gasky, number 21, from Davenport, Iowa. Same hometown as the wrestler Seth Rollins. Uh, he's been all right this season, 6.65 ERA, 170 whip. He's played in five games this season. His opponent's average is 293. His first pitch of the day is cut on and missed. That is Brill taking the cut and missing. Yeah, 17 strikeouts, 12 walks, so looking to keep those walk numbers low, keep those strikeout numbers high. Commanding the zone early here with the fastball, but we'll see how that works. We saw in the top half of the inning, well, Evan Waters commanded the zone earlier, yeah. struggled to find it for a bit, so. We'll see if Gasky goes through the same issues. And that was a good pitch after a nice holdup on the last one by Jake Brill. Saved himself because he would be walking back to the dugout if he hadn't <laughs> done that on the last one. So one and two the count now. Gasky, the pitch. That's a great pitch. Nice, a nice little curveball looked like coming back away from the hitter. And that's an opening batter strikeout for Gasky. Good start for the Bobcat pitcher. Yeah, we saw him go fastball, fastball early, and then commands the zone, and then late drops in that little curveball, off-speed pitch, just runs away from the hitter. Nice pitching performance there in the first out. And there's another sh quick strike. This is Danny Wurstenfeld on the mound. At the plate, excuse me, and then that pitch is outside. First thing you notice about about this guy is that he, he's 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 big. He's got <laughs> he's you know he he's got some power to him. You can tell that. You're gonna have to be careful. Just a bit outside there. So two and one the count to Worstenfeld. You can see Gasky really trying to really command the corners, not not trying to put the ball over the middle of the plate. He's Working the outside of the play a lot here yep, to Danny one, Westenfeld. But. That one was just a little outside as well. So three and one the count. Hitters count here. We'll see if he has a green light to swing here. He did not. Well, he might have, but he took the pitch <laughs> anyway. So it is a walk. The first base runner is on for the Chippewas. Now Donahue, we talked about him in the open. One of the better hitters here. It's a nice little 2-3 punch at the top of the order for the Chippewas with Westenfeld and then Donahue back-to-back. -back. You're, you're probably your two, at least statistically, your two best hitters with the 361 batting average and then the 292 batting average there. As this is a slow chopper back to the pitcher. It's bobbled, and it gets away from the Bobcats. Now Westenfeld, he's going to look to round third, no, he's going to stay, and everybody will hold up. And that's a bit of a disaster in the infield for Gasky and the Bobcats. Yeah, And at the end, you, uh, runners on second and third. As a coaching decision, they're going to tell you to eat that ball, not throw that one down to first. I'll be throwing yeah. it a little behind. Yeah, I mean, you have the bobble. It would have been a really tight call on first. And then it gets away, and obviously it gives everyone, others, everyone else a free base. So... Looked like he tried to drop that arm yeah, slot too, get yeah. it out a little quicker. In any case, it's second and third now with one out, and the Chippewas knocking on the door here early as well, just like the Bobcats did. This is another one that, ooh, did it hit? Looks like it fouled off his inside leg. Yeah, I was going to say, it might have hit Prout's leg there on the foul. Yeah, I think it just hit off his left leg. He'll take a second here. In this day and age, it's wild to not see a guy wearing the shin guard. As well as the elbow pad. Yeah, I mean, I think he's he got one. I think it just got the other leg. Or it might have missed the shin guard. I don't know. It, it's clearly affecting Prout, though. Yeah. Who is it the looks like he's grabbing right where it was at, too. Yeah. Right where that shin guard's sitting. Now it's a 250 hitter. He got a 289 on base percentage. This is his 13th appearance of the season. His ninth start. 14 strikeouts, though. A big number, obviously. As a cleanup hitter, your job is to mm -hmm. hit the ball far, send guys home. But Yeah, and he's got a real opportunity to do that here with Worstenfeld. 
on third. Donahue on second with one out. This is hit hard into center field, and it'll get down. That's a base hit. That's going to score a run. So Prout delivers. He's hyped up on first base, as he should be. That was a well-hit ball into center field. No chance for Antle to make a play on it, and it is 1-0 Chippewas. I think Antle might have saved that second run, however, the way yeah. he kind of came on that ball quick and then slowed he up real fast. Did. He absolutely did. That's a good play. You know, They probably won't talk about it too much, but it's a great play to come in. Get the ball back into the infield quickly. But in any case, damage on the board for the Chippewas here in the opening inning. one nothing, And that is inside the next batter up, Mikey Murphy. Number one, the left fielder for today. Gaskey's just got to settle back in now. Got to find a way to limit the damage here in the first. That one's fouled back. One and one, the count now. Yeah, Mikey Murphy, another one of those guys. High strikeout numbers, 20 strikeouts on the season for him, only two walks. So the Central Michigan team is a swinging team. They will swing. They will be aggressive. As you saw with Proud, if he gets a hold of it, it's going to go a long way, driving some runs. But mm -hmm. the Bobcats looking to stay away from the bats. Yeah, exactly. Very solid numbers for Murphy. 270 average, 866 OPS, 541 slug percentage. So he's hitting the ball well. He hits one hard down the left field line, and it's just foul. That would have easily scored one. And I think that might have scored Prout it first. might have scored two because Prout was taken off on the steal there, and he might have had a head of steam. Well, the Bobcats take one, and now Gasky steps off for a minute. Now he's back on. One and two is the count. Gasky had a look over at first. Now he'll throw, and that is off and away. Looked like he just let go of that ball half a second too late. Yeah. So the count now, two and two, with one out here in the bottom of the first inning. Here's the two-two. That's out and away again. Three and two, the count. This is a big pitch coming up here. Looks like he keeps going away with that pitch. He's not... Doesn't want any part. I don't, I don't think he's finishing his throwing motion. It, it almost seems like he's kind of holding the ball just, like I said, a half a second too long, and that's forcing it to, to just go outside. Here's the 3-2, and that one is right down the middle. Big time pitch from Gasky to get the strike out there. That was a pretty pitch there. Really good. Just caught the off outside corner there. He got it right that time. He found it. He went through his motion super well and did what he needed to do, and he gets that crucial second out. So the Bobcats now trying to limit the damage, and now up to the plate comes Bert, Spencer Verberg, the catcher for today. That's a great pitch. Did, did go around, so he'll give him the strike. Verberg was not expecting that. He was ahead of that pitch big time. Only 29, only this is 29th plate appearance of the season for Verberg, so... Not a ton of reps this season yet at the plate. Yeah, that one just a little bit outside. So ball one. Runners on the corners for the chips. Looking to increase their first inning lead. Both teams with a couple of hits in the first. And now Gasky will check the runner back over to first. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. Oh, they'll go back over to first again, check the runner again. And that's Prout over there on first base after that RBI single that he had. He's just, I think he noticed that after that foul ball, I think he noticed that he yeah. was taken off. That one is low and away. Two and one now. I was going to say, he's done a nice job at holding that runner on first. The more of the issue, I think he's got to focus on that player, or that batter rather. Make sure he handles his business at the plate before he yeah. worries about the other guys on. I think you're right. Two and one now the count. There's a good pitch. Two and two. Nice off speed. He's got that off speed to work here these last couple uh, these last couple of batters. Yeah, it seems like he's setting up. He's almost playing in reverse. He's setting up that fastball with mm -hmm. the off speed and then finishing off a hitter late. That fastball in the corner has been hot for him today. 
And there's hit. That will that get through? No, it goes off the glove of Adams. And that'll be an infield single, and that'll score another run. Home comes Donahue. 2 nothing is the lead for the Chippewas. There's always going to be a tough play there for, for Adams. Even if he grabbed it cleanly, he would have had to spin around and make a quick throw over to first or second. And in any case, it goes off of his glove. And Central Michigan pick up another run. I think they're going to score that as an error. Yeah. They, they did, I believe. They did score that as an error. So that's the second error of the game for the Bobcats. Yeah, it's a tough play on the backhand. Moving to your left, you see the guy scoring in front of you too, so your eyes obviously yep. run to the runner as well. Tough play, but big run for the chips. That one gets away, and the runners will advance. Just got away from Cawthorn there. So now instead of first and second, it's second and third. And now I think we're going to have a visit here from the Ohio pitching coach. He will come out and... So just discuss things here because this is in danger of letting it get away. And the Bobcats need to limit the damage here. After, you know, they left the bases loaded there at the top of the first inning. And now Central is making them pay here because they're taking advantage of their opportunities. Yeah, it's a smart mound visit. Go out, settle your guy down. Second and third, now two outs. Obviously, just a few pitches away. That 2 0 count looking right in the eyes, though. So looking to limit damage. Be smart, play smart. Yep. I think it's more of just a calming. Yeah, down no, you your saw pitcher. you saw that pat on the back yeah. there from the pitching coach. Just, hey, you got this type. You just just lock it in and make sure you get done what needs to get done here because this is a big at bat. This is this is a even early in this ball game. This yeah. is crucial that the Bobcats limit the damage here down in the count and down in the game right now. Two nothing in both counts, both the pitch count and the score count. That one's outside. Three and O oh now the count. It almost looks like he's trying to place that off speed pitch on the outside corner rather than just throw it. I think it could be a big, big factor if he's unable to locate it. That's a four pitch walk for Bryson Webb, the shortstop. So the bases are loaded. And number eight in the in the. Lead is Nick Dardis, number 23. He will come to the plate in a big spot. Yeah, big option to hear for Dardis, hitting 220 on the year, so can up that in a big way. That one is right down the middle. Needed that pitch to start this count off the right way. 0-1 the count. Gasky in a little bit of trouble, but he can work his way out of it still with the two outs. 0-1 the count to Dardis. He lays down a bunt. It's a good bunt, but the play is made nice and smooth there. Gasky just kind of calmed things down and just made a nice, simple play over to first. It was some heads up fielding there after the mistake he had earlier in the inning. So Gasky limits the damage, but the Bobcats do surrender two runs to Central Michigan. We'll be back with the second inning. Bobcats looking to respond at the plate when we come back.
Back at Bob Wren, Bobcats trailing the Chippewas 2-0 after the first inning of action, and the Bobcats now will get a chance to match that to play. It's a quick bunt laid down for the Bobcats, and it'll be a nice play there from Waters to stop that. It was, I believe, who was at the plate there? It was Catherine. Yeah, Catherine was there at the plate, the catcher. Laid down, it was a nice bunt, but it was heads up. Once again, both pitchers now back-to-back, -back, nice defensive plays, both by Gasky at the end of the last inning and then here by Waters at the beginning. They're heads up, they just picked it up and threw them out. And now the Bobcats will be down their first out of the inning, and that will bring up Taylor Gill, number three, designated hitter today for the Cats. Went around, I or no, he did not go around, but that was just a, a strike. That was a weird motion. He kind of, yeah, I don't know I why, really I, don't like know, I don't know <laughs> what that was, but the umpire kind of did a little hand spin there. In any case, it's 0 2. And that gets away from the catcher, Verberg. Doesn't matter, no one's on the base pass. Much as it, it may seem, that is a hard pitch to take. Coming Very. from that left side, as a left handed hitter, I can attest to you, that is a tough pitch it, to no, take. No, it, it is for sure. Here comes the 1 2. And he takes that one and goes right back to it. Yep. Waters is, you know, how are the kids saying it these days? Locked in. <laughs> and he um, has easily dispatched the first two hitters that he's faced in this half inning. And that'll bring up Billy Adams to the plate. And that's high and away, 1 0. Yeah, Waters done a good job keeping that pitch count low in this inning. A couple quick outs. So he looks to stay, stick around in this ballgame here for a while. It's Bobcats looking to get something going. Yeah, just 23 pitches after. I mean, he had a lot of pitches in that first inning. This one is fouled high and away. Adams steps back into the plate. One and one the count with two outs here in the top of the second inning. Tough take there. That, one, that one's right on the inside corner. Good pitch from Waters again. He's looking to get out of this inning. Three strikeouts already. Looking to pick up number four right here. One and two the count to Billy Adams. That one is, it's going to be fouled. It's going to be away. No chance for a play on the ball. So it remains one and two. One and two count, and there's a swing and a miss. Got him off speed. Good stuff. That was about as easy as an inning as you'll see from a pitcher. Evan Waters making it look simple for the Chippewas. Another zero on the board for the Bobcats. The Chippewas lead remains 2 nothing, and they'll come back to the plate with a chance to add a couple more. You're listening and watching the Bobcats live on YouTube TV and Ohio Bobcat TV. We'll be back. Back at Bob Wren, 
for the bottom of the second inning. And if you're just tuning in, you might be wondering, bottom of the second, why is Central Michigan batting? Well, again, of course, this whole series was meant to be played up in Mount Pleasant this weekend, but due to some snow, I think they got about six inches of snow up in Mount Pleasant. That's not baseball weather. So. Hasn't been so pleasant. Yeah, no, not, not particularly pleasant. And, well, the Bobcats have a baseball <laughs> field. Why not play the series down here in Athens? And, I mean, the weather ain't – too different down here. It's, you know, about 35, 40 degrees, but the skies are clear, and we're playing baseball here on this March Sunday afternoon. Crisp uh, and, and, and solid day for some baseball. Bobcats trailing 0-2. 2-1 up in the count is Blake Gasky. Who That's a nice pitch right there. It was a really nice pitch. Got out of trouble. I mean, gave up a couple in that first inning, but got out of trouble very nicely at the end of it. Two and two, the count here. That one is hit hard towards the shortstop Adams. He picks it up, and he makes the play. Caught over there by Dolan. So a fairly simple 6-3 there. And that'll be good for Adams after that uh, little mishap he had in the first to just you know make one of those routine shortstop plays. Yeah, certainly good for the confidence. Get it back on your side a little bit. Yep. Back at the top of the order, they almost batted around in that first inning, did Central Michigan. But this will bring Jake Brill back up to the plate, center fielder. He struck out in the first. Nice location on that pitch there, just off the outside edge. Thought it had a chance. Yeah, 1-0 and oh at the count. That one's low, so 2-0 and oh quickly. Brill is ahead, and after striking out, in the last at bat, you know, you'll love being ahead in the count. Let to be a lot more aggressive as a hitter. We'll see how aggressive Brill gets here on the 2 0. And he holds off smartly. That was another good pitch, solid placement, but good vision there from Brill to not swing at that. So 3 0 is the count. We'll see if he's got the green light. He does not, and that's a four pitch walk. So Jake Brill takes first base. And that'll bring up. Westenfeld. Again, that command just a little bit off. Just, yep. just barely missing off the outer edge. Not by much, but it's by enough. It's usually due to either being too hyped up, too pumped up, kind of missing off the edge, or just a little minor error. Now check the runner back to first. Gasky, we saw him do that a couple times in the last inning. Just keeping him honest over there at first base. Now Gasky down the middle. That is a little bit low. Oh, or excuse me, one and O is the count to Westenfeld. I don't necessarily hate the idea of continuously looking over trying to pick the guy up first, but at some point your focus has to remain on that batter. I was gonna say it might be messing with the routine a little bit. Yeah. That pitch low again. Two and O. That's six straight balls now. For Gasky, he's got to find the zone here. If you're a runner, this is probably the time you want to take off as he nope, checks on again, him there. He checked him again. He heard you. But does that, I mean, you would probably know a little bit better than I would. I don't have a ton of baseball experience. Does it really mess with your routine as a pitcher? It can. It can. It's more of a runner takes off, and he's too quick for the throw. It wasn't a bad throw yeah. from Cawthron. Probably would have had a slower runner, but the quickness of Brill – Gets him over to second base. So after all that, he ends yeah. up getting a second anyway on the steal. Like I said, smart decision to take off on one of those pitches. You obviously, as the pitcher, you know that you want to focus on, so you're going to try and lock in a little harder, try and make sure that pitch is perfect, and the runner knows that. And That is a fair ball. Check the runner over and played it back to third. Nice very, play. very nice play there for Bryce Smith. Just smooth as you like there. Or actually, no, that was Dolan, Dolan excuse yeah. me, yeah. Yeah, Dolan just grabbed it off the back of the glove, that nice backhand, checked the runner back to second, and then smoothly over to first where Bryce Smith made the catch over there. So, smartly done. Again, we're seeing Gasky kind of trying to place that fastball on the outer edge rather than just throw it. I think that's a... The kind of pitch where 
if he can start to just throw it, get used to it, get comfortable with it again, I think that's a big factor in his success. That one is low, 2-0. and Again, he's just not really finding the zone. It's been a struggle here in this second inning to get that ball in the strike zone. We'll see if he can get it right here, though. 2-0. There it is. It's a nice pitch. It was a really nice pitch. He's had some just gorgeous pitches today, but it's just the consistency has been the issue. But he is... In a decent spot here, runner on second, two and one the count here with two outs in the bottom of the second inning. Chippewa's leading it two nothing, and Gasky will step off briefly. Playing some mind games with him on second. Yep. Billy Adams tried to run that little show play there. See daylight, but no throw. That one just a little outside. Three and one now the count. It is. Donahue up at the plate. He had a single in the first and then did score a run as well. And there's ball four. So the third walk of the day, or no, the fourth walk of the day for Gasky. I think more or less it's in his own head. I think he's just trying to be too perfect to each pitch rather than just throw it and let the results happen. Oh, now runners on first and second. And now I think you'll see there, Cawthorn just comes out, has a word. Say, again, this is a, these are big at bats, and we saw Prout took advantage in the first, had the RBI single to start things off for the Chippewas, and now he's got another opportunity with runners on base. And he'll step off, throw, and that's uh, looks like that wasn't awkward supposed little to spot. I don't, I don't <laughs> think that was supposed to happen either. <laughs> you saw, you saw Brill kind of standing there and. Turn and duck for cover. Yeah, didn't, <laughs> didn't really know what was going on. I don't know if Gasky even really knew what was going on there. That's a good off-speed pitch. He's been able to locate that well. Yeah, just along he really that has. Outer edge. That's a good call. He's been He's been doing really well with that off-speed. It's just the placement on the fastball today hasn't been where it needs to be. That was an off-speed pitch, but a little bit outside this time. So one and one now to count to Cole Prout, who, of course, again, we just talked about, had that big hit in the first. And again, another opportunity here. Looks at the runner at second. Here comes the pitch, and it is in there. He goes off-speed again. That's three straight, and he's starting to find that location. One and two the count here with two outs. I think Cole Prout is sitting dead red here on the fastball. He wants one to come back. Had that one, he slapped back up the middle last time. I think he's looking for it again. Here's the pitch. And it was, oh, just a little touch there. He did load it up, as he said. He was ready for it, but I think he went off speed there. Yeah. And he was just a little bit ahead of it. As a hitter, you see a lot of off speed come in a row. You're waiting for that fastball. You're yeah. just waiting on it. Now here's the one, two. Cut on. This has popped up in the air. It's in foul territory. It's a tough spot. Yeah, I know. Dolan was not able to get to it. So the count remains one and two. It was always going to be a tough play there. Regardless, I mean, you saw Roush was coming in trying to make yeah. a play on it. Dolan running straight backwards. Yeah, yep. <laughs> it was. Well, they live to fight another day. Here's the one, two to Proud. Nice Just nice outside, the Ohio dugout wanted that one. You heard, <laughs> you heard the yelling. It was a, it was a good pitch. They went off speed again, two and two. The count now. It's been a good battle here, and that one's a little Ooh. high. So three and two now. And this is a big pitch, in this ball game early on here. Gasky, who's already thrown forty three pitches through two innings. Bobcat dugout getting hyped. Here's the 3-2. That's a great take He there. did not swing. Wow. That's a tough take from Prout. Like you said, it was very close. Home plate umpire didn't know. Pointed to the uh, umpire that's standing kind of 
right in front of second base. He gave the safe sign. So now it is Mikey Murphy who comes to the plate with the bases jacked. And I think that there might be some movement over in the Ohio bullpen. If Correct me if I'm wrong. I think I see a couple of people get yeah. heading over there getting ready to pitch. So another mound visit here. Cawthorn comes out, just has a word with his pitcher, Gasky, who is in a tough spot again, but he has the opportunity to – get out of it, but Central Michigan are knocking on the door again. Mikey Murphy here with the bases loaded has an opportunity. That's a heck of a walk, by the way, to work there for Proud. Down 1-2 in the yeah. count. That 3-2 pitch is a strike the yeah. entire way. It's the last few inches. It was, a, it was a great pitch. I don't really think you can fault Gasky yeah. all too much. He did a, did a good job, but an even better take from Proud. This one is down the middle, and it's going to stray foul. I think probably luckily yeah. For the Chippewas, I don't even think Murphy was ready to run. <laughs> As you see, Brill almost <laughs> halfway home by the time the ball even bounces. So we'll see what Gasky does here. He was really relying on that off speed in the last batter. We'll see if he switches up the approach or if he sticks with it here with Murphy. I think that Malvis was a big factor as well. It may seem like it's a. That one is hit hard, and it is a base hit. Down up the middle, one run scores. Two run score. Around comes Prout, and he will score. It's a bases clearing double for Mikey Murphy. And the Chippewas have broken it open. Five nothing is the lead now. I was going to say that mountain visit's been a big factor in uh, finding the zone again, but. And that time he, he strayed a little too close. It. Straight a little too close. Murphy with a beautiful piece of hitting there right over the top into pretty much straight into the corner of the 340 yeah. sign over there. Roush collected it, but, I mean, by the time Roush even got to it, I mean, already rounding third was Prout. It was great base running as well. Everybody was heads up. And Mikey Murphy with the biggest hit of the game so far, making it a 5 nothing game. Three RBIs there on the bases clearing double into left field, and now... I mean, if you're Gasky, you got to just be hitting yourself. Yeah. It, 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 the mistakes, the. Truthfully, it's a confidence trader. It really is. No, you'll you'll feel about you'll feel that one as this one is hit foul down the left field line. One and two, the count now. And there has been you know there's been action in that Ohio bullpen. You can see it. Yeah. Here's the pitch. Just off the plate, and there's the steal of third. I don't, I don't even think Cawthon was ready yeah, for no that. Yeah, no throw there. Yeah, I mean it was. It's tough when you're when you got the right-handed batter right there. Yeah. But Murphy swipes third now, so any sort of base hit will bring him home. And there's a swing and a miss. It's a nice pitch on the outside. Actually. Really nice pitch, but the damage was done by that man. Murphy with the jack into left field scores three. The base is clearing double. Gives the Chippewas a 5 nothing lead, and the Bobcats have all the work to do here as they come back to the plate in the top of the third. You're watching Ohio Baseball Live on Ohio Bobcat TV.
Welcome back to Bob Wren. Bobcats have all the work to do. Down 5 nothing early on. And it was a three-run bottom of the second inning there from Central Michigan. It was all Mikey Murphy's doing. The bases were loaded, and he had a beautiful double into left field to clear him. And that gave the three runs that they got in the bottom of the second inning and the five-run lead total. It is a four hits on five runs, and the Bobcats have the two hits that they got in the first inning and no runs to show for it. They had the bases loaded in the back in the first, but couldn't get anything, and they've been made to pay for it. And since those that early shakiness, Evan Waters has been very good. As there's another pitch right down the middle. That is strike number two. Yeah, that fastball has been his best friend today. He's located that thing very well. Yeah, Mancino up at the plate. That is hard hit to second. It's bounced, and then it's eventually caught. It was a good play. I believe it was Dardis. Dardis yeah. yeah, Dardis made the play there at second. It was a nice, not exactly perfect play, but he did the job and got the ball to first base. It did take a bobble, but he did his job. Mancino thrown out at first. So the Bobcats take their first out of the inning and up to the plate steps J.R. Nelson. Had that wacky play in the first that got him on yeah. base. I believe they ended up scoring that a single. They did end up scoring that a single. It's one of the weakest singles yeah, he'll ever hit. Yeah, <laughs> he, won't, he won't hit many softer than that. <laughs> that one has hit hard, no doubt about that there one. That's a single into right field. So two for two is J.R. Nelson. That's a good piece of hitting. <laughs> Just had to make up for that one. Yeah, he had to. That's all. Had to get in tune there, and he did that and then some. So a good stuff. So Bobcats get their first base runner in a couple of innings, and J.R. Nelson on board for Gideon Antle to step to the plate. I got to assume Gideon Antle's looking to dismantle one here. Yeah. Will he be able to get a hold of one? That one's outside. Bobcats just need something here. They got to get back in this game. They're down 5-0, but it's still very early. And you got to get to Waters a little bit because since that first inning, he has been very good. And he's only pitched 36 pitches. Yeah. He's been very effective with that fastball. I think, obviously, if you're getting an Antle, you want to wait on that fastball. Fine when you like, but if that off-speed pitch flies and flattens out in the zone, would not be surprised to see him take a big rip. 2-0 the count, and that is very high and inside. Nearly took Antle's head off, but he... Dodged out of the way. So now 3-0 is the count. I think if there's one guy that would have a green light <laughs> on the Ohio Bobcats to, to take a hack at a 3-0, it would probably be Gideon Antle. We'll see what he does here. We'll see what Waters cooks up for him here on the 3-0 pitch. And he gives him a nice fastball on the inside corner. 3 and one the count. Antle laid off. I think if you're Gideon Antle, the, the idea is more make Waters work. Yep. Make him throw another pitch. Yep. Here comes the 3 1. And that it's is away. Very good at bat. So the Bobcats have runners on first and second now. Their best two hitters are aboard. It was the nice single from Nelson, and then a nice walk worked by Gideon Antle. And that will bring the cleanup hitter, A.J. Roush, to the plate with one out. We had this exact same situation actually <laughs> in the first inning with runners on first and second for A.J. Roush. He Struck out in his first at-bat. He'll be looking to improve on that here. That one is hit hard back to the pitcher. It bounces around. Waters gets it and makes the play over at first, but the runners do advance. So Roush does, does what he needs to do, advances the runners, and he gives an opportunity here for Bryce Smith with runners on second and third. A base hit will probably score two. Will he be able to step up here in a big spot for the Bobcats? They need it bad. That ball doesn't trickle off the glove there. That might be in center field scoring yeah. pair anyways. Yeah, you're very right. It was a nice, uh, again, a heads-up play. He's made some very nice defensive plays today, has Evan Waters. And that was another one. Again, just a slight bobble, but does a good job of corralling it and getting it over to first base. Similar to Dardis a couple plays ago. Here's the 1-0. A little bit inside, 2-0 the count now to Bryce Smith. 
It's a was, tough take from a lefty again. Yep. He was hit by the first pitch he saw in the first inning, so now he's got an opportunity to really do an at-bat. Here comes a 2-0, and it's way outside. 3-0 now the count. I think if there's any tell from the way Bryce Smith is uh, taking that pitch, he is looking for an off-speed pitch here. He is waiting back quite a bit. Here comes that 3-0, and it's low. So the bases once again are loaded for the Ohio Bobcats. And that brings Nick Dolan up to the plate. He had the big spot in the first, and he's got another opportunity here to potentially get the Bobcats back in this game. And now a mound visit incoming here for Evan Waters, who's been good up to now. Yeah. Could be more of a confidence thing here. Just remind him, hey, you've dominated for the past two innings. Let's yeah. go ahead and finish the job. And Dolan struck out looking in the first. So now this is a big spot. Can he find a way to get the Bobcats back in it? They're down 5 nothing. But an opportunity here with the bases loaded to potentially get back into this game. You've got Cawthorn, the catcher, on deck. And here is Nick Dolan, the third baseman, in a big spot here for the Bobcats. That pitch is outside. 1-0 and oh is the count for Dolan. Healthy lead off of first for Bryce Smith. Here's the 1-1, one, one, or excuse me, the 1-0, and that is high. 2-0 is the count now. Don't wait for something to drive here. He will pounce Same, all over yeah, it. Yeah, very similar situation to the last at-bat with Bryce Smith. Good pitch. Waters needed that one, and he got it right down the middle. Strike number one in the at-bat. It was a nice little change-up, it looked like. Dolan back in the box. 2-1 the count here in a big spot. That ball is hit high in the air. Under it is Dardis. He calls off it. And in coming to make the play is Donahue. So once again, the Michigan or Central Michigan Chippewas get out of a jam. And they leave the bases stranded again. The Bobcats... Second time in three innings that they've had the bases loaded and they get no runs to show for it. So we stay at 5 nothing. We'll be back for the bottom of the third. You're listening to Ohio Baseball on Ohio Bobcat TV. Back for the bottom of the third here. Ethan Sarger, Wes Minky, Ellie Metzler down on the sidelines here for this great matchup between the Ohio Bobcats and the Central Michigan Chippewas. Game three of this set. Team split the doubleheader yesterday. Chips won 6-1 in the opener, and then the Bobcats with an offensive explosion in game number two. 18-3 was the score in that one. Of course, if we end up getting to <laughs> over 10 by 7. There would be a mercy rule today because it is a travel day. So if the chips continue to roll offensively, we may only play seven innings depending on how things go. Bobcats will be keen for that to not happen, but you can't say they haven't had their opportunities. Yeah. 
have had plenty of chances, a couple, couple times bases juiced, unable to do anything with it. You got you to take advantage. And look, at the end of the day, the Chips have absolutely taken advantage when they've when they've gotten runners in score. I mean, both innings, they've gotten runners in spots, and they've yeah. gotten big hits when they needed them. It was Prout in the first. It was Murphy in the second, the four and five hitter, doing what they need to do. And now it is a 3-2 count here as back out is Gasky. He's thrown 56 pitches, three strikeouts, five walks is probably what jumps out the most yeah. out of that stat line. That one is a good pitch. A little ahead of it there was the batter, number nine. That is Webb, shortstop. So three to the count here. Foul back into the protective netting. Good thing for us. Might have might have drilled us in the face. <laughs> Don't worry, Ethan. I would have caught it for you. <laughs> I hope so, because I can't catch. <laughs> Bryson Webb takes outside, ball four. That is walk number six for Gasky. We've talked a lot about the control issues today. It's been an issue. Yeah, it's it's been a command thing. It, mostly with that fastball, he's almost trying to overthrow yeah, it a little and bit. Here, and, that, and that's going to be his last pitch of the day. Yep. Like I was saying, I think it's just a command thing. That fastball has been the primary factor. If he hasn't been able to locate it, which has let him throw a lot more off speed, the Central Michigan hitters have noticed that, jumped all over it. And well, we've got a pitching change here for the Bobcats. We're going to step aside really quickly when we come back. Bobcats got to clean things up offensively. We'll see you in a minute. Back at Bob Wren, Bobcats making a pitching change. Out goes Blake Gasky, and into the game comes Zach Weber, who's been the Bobcats' best reliever. 1.32 ERA on the season and 13 and two-thirds innings pitched. He's got 13 strikeouts to nine walks, only given up two earned runs the entire year. So the Bobcats looking to lock things down, get a couple innings from their stretch guy. For a little bit more on the coaching and the changes that are going on with the Chippewas, we head down to the sidelines and Ellie Metzler. Yeah, thanks, Ethan. So one difference I've noticed between the two dugouts today is in their coaching styles. Central Michigan's coaching staff is so fresh to the school, their entire staff is marking their first year at the school. CMU head coach Jake Rabel is making his coaching debut with the team this season after pitching for them for four seasons. And Ohio's head coach Craig Moore has been with the team for 12 years. Central Michigan's team is older with five seniors on their starting lineup. The Chippewas coaches put a lot of their decision making into the hands of the players who have been there for more years and they support and guide these decisions while Coach Moore is confident in his calls and has more of a leadership style to coaching. Yeah, thanks Ellie. You can really see that the, the contrast, right? You've got a young a vibrant coaching staff. It really interesting, actually, where you, you've got Justin Sumner, one of the members of Central Michigan staff, was on Ohio staff for a long time. So the Bobcats, uh, and obviously they've had a lot of consistency. Craig Moore has brought consistency to this program, and he's been here for 12 years now. He's been doing it you know, his way for the whole time, and now you've got a new, a new style with Jake Rabel and the coaches at Central Michigan. So an interesting play there on the contrast in Styles as Weber is into the game. He had a 1-0 count with the runner on. He inherited that runner on first base. And 
Well, he's got to get out of trouble here a little bit. That one's just a bit outside. Two and O oh is the count. Seeing a similar thing there with Weber, as we saw from Gasky, trying to get that fastball along the outer edge, but not really able to locate it too well yet. Once again there, 3-0. Nailed it, West. just a, again a bit outside. Looking to get a strike here is Weber. And he does, right? On the outside corner, nice bounce back pitch there from Zach Weber. Three and one the count now. No outs here in the bottom of the third inning. That's a good pitch there and again. another one there, strike two. So the count back even. This seems appears to be four straight fastballs, so don't know where the batter's looking to look here. And he gets it. It'll be right back uh, up the middle. It'll be over Weber's head, and it's a nice, smooth play there. That was, I believe, yeah, it was Nelson over at short. And he just, it was a little bit too quick for him to make the tag on to second. So he grabbed, just picks it up and chucks it over to first, so you get an out which the Bobcats were looking for, but the runner does advance. So kind of a win-win there for both teams. And this will bring Eli Stewart up to the plate, the number nine hitter for the Chips. They're on their second time through the order here in the bottom of the third inning. That gets through. It's Nelson just can't quite corral it. The ball is still... There, I think if if Webb wasn't if Webb looked, he might have been able to go home, but he stays on third. So now first and third here. Nelson, that's another tough play. He's had a couple of those where it's just a tough spot there at short. And they'll rule that a hit, I believe. Yeah. Gasky's numbers, by the way, two innings, four hits, five runs, all of them earned, six walks. Three strikeouts and 65 total pitches. 28 of them were strikes. Yeah, those six walks really just the control issues again yeah. that we talked about. And that was where he'll look to improve after today. Weber now, runners on first and third. The runner on first is his. That runner over on third base will be attributed to Gasky if he does get home. Back at the top of the order here with Brill. Shows bunt, and he bunts it foul back by us. So we'll see what the mentality is here now that they, that he's shown that bunt. Will the Bobcats play up, bring the infield in potentially? You know, you know that, that runner's coming a little home further fast. Up too, yep, you know so. that runner's coming home fast from third. Here comes Weber's 1-0. -oh. Nope, it won't come. He will throw it <laughs> over to first base, check the runner. That is Stewart over there. Here's the 0 1. It tries to bunt it again, and this time it's fouled a little bit less far back, but still fouled. <laughs> so 0 and 2 now the count for Jake Brill, who is 0 for 1 on the day with a walk. Here's the 0-2. Swung hard up the middle. That's a base hit. That's going to score a run. And the Chippewas lead balloons to six. A nice piece of hitting there. Opposite field for Jake Brill. The righty goes into right field. And the lead is six. Six nothing. The Chippewas lead it. Yeah, nice job by Brill. Not trying to pull that ball. Just ride with it. He tried to locate that on the outside corner of the zone. Brill took it down second baseline. Hit it right through the gap. And Weber, that run will not be attributed to him. That runner will that run will be attributed to Blake Gasky. But everything else now is 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 Weber's. Here's Worstenfeld. The Westenfeld, excuse me. He is 0 for 1 as well with the walk. 
again, we talked at the beginning of the broadcast about how the top of the order is where a lot of the problem hitters lie for Central Michigan. But really, it's been the middle of the order that's doing the job yeah. today because the top of the order has just gotten on base. They haven't had, you know, no big hits, no couple, a lot of walks again. But, you know, we talked about it. It was Pr Prout in the, f in the first and then Murphy in the second with the big hits to get the runs across. And then, of course, Brill here doing some damage as well. Weber's 3-0, and that is outside. So a four-pitch walk issued by Weber. And now the bases are loaded for Central Michigan with one out, and their best hitter, Jake Donahue, is coming to the plate. I think, again, you can call that walk all based off that just he keeps looking at the runner on second. He, he's losing a lot of his focus, trying to make sure he holds that runner up. Yeah. Doesn't let him get a big lead, but you got to locate your pitches if you want any chance to play. Well, this is a big at-bat. That one sneaks in the back door. Nice pitch there. Off speed, 0-1. Got to find a way to limit the damage here if you're the Bobcats. This one is hit hard. This could potentially be two. There's one, and there's two. A huge double play for the Bobcats right when they needed it. A classic 6-4-3, and the Bobcats get out of trouble there with the bases loaded. Donahue grounds into the double play, and the Bobcats limit the damage in the bottom of the third inning. We're heading to the fourth here at Bob Wren. The lead is six for Central Michigan. We'll be right back. Bobcats have been struggling with the lefty pitchers this weekend. Adam Rakic really shut them down in that first game of the three that they played. Then obviously the Bobcat offense went nuts in game two, and today it is quiet again, and that might be due to the efforts of Evan Waters, who has had a very nice game so far through three complete innings. That ball is fouled off. That was, I believe, Cawthron. Yes, it was at the plate. Yeah, we see a righty-heavy lineup, too, for the Bobcats is, often. Yeah. So. That's a bad matchup. It's a bad matchup with the lefty on the righty. You get definitely advantage pitcher in that situation. And, well, Waters has made it work today. That one is inside, and it glances off Cawthorn, and lead runner is on for the Bobcats. First time that's happened. And the Bobcats just have to chip into this lead. Yeah. And no pun intended. they got to find <laughs> a way to get in. And just limit the damage and try and just, again, chip away, really, because <laughs> there's no real other way to do it. And, you know, they're down 6 nothing. It's a long baseball game, and they got, they got to take advantage of their opportunities because, really, the name of the game today has been that one team has taken advantage of their opportunities, the other hasn't. Taylor Gill with a big chance here. Absolutely. As the designated hitter today. That one's off the plate. One and one. See, Cawthorn gets a nice lead off of first. We've seen Waters do that a lot, too. He's staying away from most of these hitters. He's forcing them to go opposite field. Obviously, they pull that pitch. They're going to roll over it. Ground ball out. Easy for his infielders. So, I think it's been effective today, staying away from the hitters. And he's yeah, been good at locating in a way as the, well. The placement has been really good. I was just about to say, I think it's been really, really high-quality stuff from 
from Waters. He's, he's been able to find the zone in a lot of different ways. Here's the 2-1. There's another great pitch. 2-2 two and two now the count to Gill, who struck out looking in his first at bat. Waters four strikeouts on the day, and that was his 50th pitch of the afternoon. We'll see what the leash is like. No act, no activity right now in the bullpen. Yeah. And that one is high. So the count is full for Taylor Gill. The thing, too, with guys who don't really throw as hard, so, I mean, not, not as much velocity for Waters. Mm -hmm. Command is a huge factor. And if you're not dialed with your command, obviously it can turn into a bigger problem. Very true. And he got him looking. Strike three. I think that Gill thought that he was yeah. on his way to first base. Umpire thought otherwise. It looked like it was a pitch that was on the plate. It was whether or not it was high or low. And I think the question was it might have been a little low. But yeah. in any case, it is a strikeout, the fifth of the day for Waters. And that will bring up to the plate Billy Adams who struck out in his first plate appearance as well. Here comes the 1-0. That one is high and away, 2-0. There's a strike. Two and one is the count now. Back to that fastball. He's done damage early in counts with that fastball. He usually looks to go off speed later on. Bobcats have not been able to find out how to beat that off speed pitch yet, though. Billy Adams, the sophomore from Medina, Ohio, went to St. Ignatius. That is hit hard into right field. Coming onto it is Donahue, and he makes the play. So a nice piece of fielding there. It was a Slightly shallow hit, but it was enough enough leeway for Donahue to go and make that play, and yep. he did so quite well. And Adams will head back to the dugout. He's 0 for 2. And that will bring the Bobcats back to the top of the order and Mancino. Sporting that bright orange bat. Yeah, very, very bright. <laughs> no kidding. And that will be two outs on the inning for Ohio. They still got that runner on first. Back to back. Well, you had the strikeout and then you had the pop out. And that one is low. 2-0. and oh. So it's been interesting because a couple, this has happened a couple times now. It's happened, it happened in the Adams at bat is that Waters has actually gone behind and he, you know, it hasn't phased him. Yeah. He hasn't, you know, he doesn't lose his touch or, you know, try to overdo it, but he does a good job of sticking with his trust and his command. That one's a little high, 3-0. Oh, we, we never saw the count get to 3-0, though. We'll see if the Bobcats can take advantage here. We'll see if Mancino has a green light with the count very heavily tilted in his favor. The 3-0 oh coming from Waters. It is right on the plate. There's strike one. I think in that situation, Mancino knows he's getting a fastball. It's more or less where that fastball is yep. going to be. and. Obviously, if it's not pitcher perfect, you're probably not going to take a swing at it. Nope. So the 3-1, this one you might have a little bit more to think about it. And he does swing at it, and it was a good pitch, got by him. So the count is full. Waters, again, just it doesn't phase him going behind the counts. He sticks to his command. He sticks to what has ticked today, and, well, it's ticking. <laughs> the zero on the scoreboard says that. Here's the full count pitch, and it is inside and away. We'll score that one for Mancino and the Bobcats. And once again, the Bobcats have a runner in scoring position for the third straight inning, or excuse me, the third out of four innings. But that zero still remains on the scoreboard. But up to the plate now is J.R. Nelson, who does have a hit, had a nice single in the in the third inning. <laughs> also had that single in the first. Yeah, no, that, that <laughs> wacky play that I still can't really wrap my head around. But he's got an opportunity here to go three for three and maybe put some runs on the board. That one is low and away. Want to know the count. I think this middle of the order is something that Waters wants to get through. Obviously unscathed, but tough thing to do. Yeah, and you'd, lo you'd love to get this out here because you don't want to bring Gideon Antle to the plate. That one's right back up at Waters. He kind of stopped it with his body and then made the play. Oof. That's a tough play, and Waters made it look easy. 
just kind of almost deflected it. It was like a, like he was almost made himself into a backboard, and he blocked it, made the play, might have hurt his hand a little bit. He's coming off slightly gingerly, but I think he's okay. Bobcats once again strand a runner in scoring position, and they'll go back to work on defense. Chips coming up in the bottom of the fourth. We'll be right back. You're listening to Ohio Baseball on Ohio Bobcat TV. Back at Bob Wren, nothing like a little bit of Sunday baseball is there really, just it's a nice day, it's warmed up a little bit considerably now that the sun's been out, it's about 2 p.m. here, 2.20 local time here in Athens, and we are playing baseball here on this very nice Sunday afternoon. Bobcats trailing 6 nothing. there's a nice pitch from Weber who entered the game replacing the starter, Blake Gasky. and Weber Still no earned runs, did give up the hit that added an earned run to Gasky's tally. So Central Michigan have scored in every inning, but a nice double play that was turned by the Bobcats. Nelson to Adams, Adams to um, Smith. Nice little 6-4-3 to really limit what could have been a back-breaking inning for the Bobcats. Yeah, they've done that a lot today. They've limited damage in a good way, but also... Haven't really responded yet. Yeah, I was gonna say the real issue lies for the Bobcats on the other side of the on the other side of the coin. They haven't been able to take advantage of their opportunities at the plate. They've gotten runners in scoring position. They even had they've had the bases loaded twice, and they still have a zero on the scoreboard to show for it. Meanwhile, it's six on the other side because, well, the chips have absolutely taken advantage almost every time. As that a great is a strike right on the corner. I mean, it didn't it, it didn't touch much of that plate, but it touched enough for the umpire <laughs> to call it. Um, I mean, Prout was convinced. He was ready to sprint on over to first. 3-2 the count. That is fouled back and over our heads. I think he was just kind of asking the question there, how how far inside was that? <laughs> you see, you notice that a lot. Now that I've been watching baseball and you see it at the collegiate level, there's a lot of conversations that go on at the plate between the umpire and the players. That one is also fouled back. You, you know, it's just that because you're allowed to ask that question, right? You can say, hey, how, how far outside was that? How, you know... How like if you disagree with the call, you can. As long as you're Just not disrespectful, yeah. you can't. You can't. You can't be mean. You can't be rude. But if you you can ask nicely, and usually the, uh, you know most umpires are going to tell you. That's a great and there point. is strike three. Nice, nice pitching there from Weber to fight back in that at bat. That location is extremely hard to hit. It's also extremely hard to not just take right away. It starts so low. Yeah. So Prout with a very tough at bat. And that'll bring up Mikey Murphy. He was probably his bat was the biggest swing of the day so far. That bases clearing double his last time at the plate in the second. And there's a strike. He's had himself a weekend. Had a homer in game number one of the doubleheader yesterday, helping Central to that 6-1 win. So well, certainly one of the MVPs of the weekend so far is Mikey Murphy. Yeah, that... Big double he had in that second inning. Really propelled Central Michigan here so far in this one. Yeah, broke it open for sure. 
And now he's got another opportunity. Quickly down 0-2 in the count, though, to Weber. Different pitcher now. So the mentality's got to change. Here's the 0-2. And it is off the outside. 1-2 and two now the count. Yeah, Weber's done a lot of what I said earlier. I, I mentioned he's using almost a reverse strategy. He's using that off speed early to get ahead. Slow down the, t the hitter's timing. There's a swing and a Brings miss. that fastball late. So back-to-back -back strikeouts here for Weber. And the Bobcats quickly put two outs on the board, and that will bring up Spencer Verberg for the chips. See if he goes back to it here. He started both back-to-back -back hitters now with an off-speed pitch, looking to get ahead as they're obviously looking fastball, so he had to kind of sit back on a pitch. Starts fastball there. Yeah, he started fastball and it caught the inside corner. Good placement. It was going to be, even if he swung at that, it was going to be a tough pitch to hit. So 0 and 1 the count. He's done a good job of getting ahead and counts as Weber here. And there's another big hack. And that is cut on and missed. 0 and 2 is the count. And Weber looking to finally, for the Bobcats, give them a smooth offensive inning. Yeah. Haven't seen a lot of 0 2 counts with nobody on. No. And here comes the 0-2, and Good it's location. just off the outside corner. I think Cawthorn was just trying to hold it there, that extra second. And there, yeah. they saw that conversation once again. The How far off was that? Because the, um, the, the, the catchers can ask the same question. Here comes the 1-2. And once again, Ooh. just inside. Well, every one of that one. Yeah, they very close on both of those calls. 2-2 two and two now is the count. To Verberg. Here comes Weber's pitch. And that one is, yeah. oof, that was close. <laughs> I mean, that one, that, that one, I think that one had the best shot. <laughs> and I was expecting the, I was expecting the punch out there. But in the end, the count goes full. Three and two, the count now to Verberg. Here's the payoff. And again, another close one. And Verberg once again takes, and he will take his base. So, Working it back from 0-2 to work a walk there is impressive hitting from Verberg. You can tell Weber's a little frustrated out of that out of that bump there. He really wanted one of those pitches. I think maybe third, all, the third maybe one. All four. Yeah, <laughs> the third one was was definitely his best shot. It might have been a little low, but it was definitely on the plate. At least from our, we got a nice vantage point up here. Yeah. Runner took off, fouled away. So Verberg will head back to first. And one of those times, smart pitch to try and steal on. You see the guy's a little frustrated. He's obviously going to try and make sure he puts on right over top of the plate. Yep. Take that extra time. Well, Herberg I think knew. the biggest thing here for Central is, like, at the end of the day, you're just making Weber pitch more. Yeah. Because this is already a bullpen day for the Bobcats. They're on their second pitcher here in the bottom of the yeah. fourth. And Weber's pitched solidly well, but, you know, you're not going to get five, six innings out of him. Here comes the one and one pitch, and nope, he'll check the runner back at first. Smith there alert at first base. Here comes the one and one. Nope. Maybe I'm just maybe I just shouldn't say here comes the one and one <laughs> because I've said that twice now, and both times he's thrown it back to try and stop the runner. <laughs> This time he does deliver. It's hit hard in the air. This is in left center field. Antle's coming on to make the play, and he makes the catch out in left center. So the Bobcats escape an inning unscathed for the first time today, and they put up a zero on the board for Central as we head to the top of the fifth inning. Bobcats looking to cut into the Central Michigan lead. We'll be back. You're listening to Ohio Baseball on Ohio Bobcat TV.
Mikey Murphy has had himself a weekend. We mentioned it a little bit earlier on. He had that huge home run in the first game, and today the big bases clearing double, double, excuse me, freshman, just you know, a young kid doing what he needs to do right now from Manuka, Illinois, and he has been, like I said earlier, the MVP of the weekend for the Chippewas. Yeah, 270 batting average. He's done this pretty much all season. He's been consistent, 325 on base percentage. But yeah, this weekend he has blown it open, making it quite a statement in the middle of that Chippewas lineup. Yeah, it, it is. It has been that kind of weekend for him. You know, sometimes when that bat is is lighting up and hitting, you're you're doing what you need to do, and he has been the difference maker today and throughout the weekend for the Chips. That is fouled off across the left field or right field, excuse me, towards the, the convocation center there in the background. Of course, with March Madness going on, the roundhouse at Richland is is quiet for now uh, after what was a thrilling basketball season. Yeah for both the men's and the women's teams. Now, uh, of course, with the March Madness tournament going on, I'm sure after this is done, there will be plenty of basketball to watch later on, some great games coming up later tonight. And as, we, as we're broadcasting right now, there's some great games <laughs> going on as well. But we're glad you're with us here, taking in this baseball matchup between two of the MAC, two of the MAC's more premium baseball schools. There's a cut. This is driven high and far into right field. I think it's just going to hold up before the wall. It took a little Ooh. bit of a wind blow there. That was Antle. He got a hold of it, but not quite enough. And Donahue was able to adjust and make the play. There's the first out of the inning. You saw that ball go in the air. Yeah. Off Antle's bat, man. You get a little juiced up. Yeah, it was. Another one. I think he, the, there was concern in, <laughs> in, the, in the run from Donahue there. He wasn't sure where that ball was going. He wasn't sure if it was going to stay in the park, but it, in the end it was held up. Show we bunt there was A.J. Roush. We know he's got speed. That speed is killer. We were talking about it before the game, about how on the football field he was just <laughs> one of the fastest guys, you know, you'll see out there, of course, playing up at Old Tangy Liberty just up the road in Columbus. That is hit hard into right or left field, excuse me, and that gets down, and that is a base hit. Oh, no, it's Ooh, a foul. Wow. Oh, that's a that's a fair ball. I'm not too sure about that one. And, and and Craig Moore is furious. You can see him out there, and I think he's got every right to be. That's a fair ball. I that I don't. Roush still doesn't know. He's still on second. That that looked like a fair you, ball to me. That's a tough call. That is a tough call to go against the Bobcats. And it was a really well hit ball from Roush as well. Very. Just a crisp piece of hitting. He got all of it. You could tell. Moore once Craig again Moore going out. Done, yeah. yeah he, <laughs> and I mean, I think he's got every right to be mad at this. Uh, it looked like a fair ball up here. I could say with almost certainty, I think that ball was fair. <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, look, as Roush <laughs> fouls that one back, the count now 0 2. Uh, you got it. Any part of the ball touches the line, it's yeah. a fair ball. It looked like it was on the right side of the line. <laughs> like, it, that's a, tough, that's a tough one to go against the Bobcats. Roush will have to bounce back here, down in the count 0-2. He'll foul that. He's getting contact. That's four foul balls in this. Just in this also a momentum changer as well. You rip one down the left field That line. could have been three. We know how. Yeah. We were just talking about how quick Roush is. He very well could have had three bags there with, with where that ball ended up. So the count 0-2 for Roush. And he takes that one inside. So 1-2 and two now. Water's still going strong. He's at 71 pitches. Three hits allowed, three walks, five strikeouts through four and a third. Can't really say too much else besides he's been he's been very good. Ooh. And now that one will hit Roush. Or no, it I I think they're gonna call that a miss strike three. I, that looked that was a strange one. Because I think they called that it was it was strike three, but the ball got away. Yeah. So it's gonna be. I don't know what. What do you score that? I think you score that as a, a strikeout. Yeah. And then drop. Drop. Strike ball. three. Yeah. But in any case, <laughs> after after, the, I mean, that's one of the more eventful at bats we've had today. In any case, Roush is on first, and the Bobcats have a base runner with one out here in the top of the fifth. Yeah, that was a wacky at bat. That one's away. Low and away for Bryce Smith, who is back up at the plate. He is. 
believe, 0 for 2 on the day. Or no, he's 1 for 2. He had that walk in the – or 0 for 1. Well, for nearly. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> <laughs> he's ahead in the – or no, he's tied in the count. I thought that was a ball. It was a strike. 1-1. One and one. Now the count. Bryce Smith stepping in here, trying to make a play after Roush got on base. That one is outside. Two and one now the count. Bryce Smith looking to just, the Bobcats just need a little bit of momentum. They got to find a way. Can they, if they can put a couple runs up in this inning and just cut into the lead a little bit, they'll feel a lot better about their chances in this matchup. Smith hits one hard, and but caught by the third baseman and thrown over. And that is a put out. It was Weston Feld. Making the catch at first. It's a nice play by Eli Stewart over at third. Just alert. It wasn't the hardest hit ball in the world, uh, but it was one of those dribblers where it's kind of in no man's land, and you can very easily have miscommunications between the shortstop and third baseman. And well, at the end of the day, it was just a smooth play from Eli Stewart just to get the ball over and check the runner at second. Roush did advance, and we know how quick he is. There is strike number one. Good pitch there on Nick Dolan. Bryce Smith is actually, um, was actually none for none. He was uh, <laughs> no plate appearance. He had no up until then. <laughs> now he's zero for one. He was none and none. This one is hard, right at the second baseman, Dardis, and he makes the play. So the Bobcats once again, for the fourth time in five innings, strand a runner in scoring position. It has just been the score, the story of the day for Ohio at the plate. They've had the opportunities, but they have not been able to take advantage. So. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. We're halfway through here at Bob Wren. Central leads 6-0. Welcome back to Bob Wren. We don't have the full capabilities of the production truck just yet, by the way. It's coming soon. We're very excited that we're going to put some baseball broadcasts on ESPN Plus here in the near future. But if we did have a production truck, we'd pull up a replay of that A.J. Roush hit because we just watched it back on our stream. And I think it's about the clearest fair ball I've ever seen. <laughs> and, and it was, I think, again, we, we were just talking about it. Craig Moore was very, very angry. And I, I think that, again, you know, now, especially after watching that replay, I think he's got every right to be because, again, that could have been a game-changing play for Ohio, and instead they end up it, – it's taken off the board. Because like we said, that really could have been three. Yeah. Uh, with, with the speed that Roush has, we know how quick he is. He was motoring. He was at second by the time the ball was even close to being corralled. So that's a tough break for the Cats in a day that really just hasn't gone their way in a lot of aspects so far. Also unfortunate for Roush. He has to stand out there and left and look at where the ball dropped. Yeah. Knowing it was fair. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now the Chippewas will look to continue to pad their lead. And they're back down to the eighth spot in their lineup. This is Dardis at the plate. He is 0 for 2. A couple of ground outs so far in the day for him. 
You know, Weber since a little bit shaky in that first two thirds, but now he has been very solid in the last inning. And there is a strikeout looking third of the day. Dardis goes down, and Weber is looking good so far here in the bottom of the fifth. He's executed that pitch so well, just right along really the outer has. edge. He really has. He's done a good job. And he's really calmed the game down right when the Bobcats needed somebody yeah. to do that. He's done a good job of coming in and doing what he needs to do. And he'll face the bottom of the order here. This is Stewart at the plate. He got that single in the third, grounded out the first, so he's one for two on the day. 0-1 quickly down here. That one is hit hard into center. This is going to be a tough play for Gideon Antle, and it is out, and it is gone. Home run, Eli Stewart, some power from the nine spot, and the Chips increase their lead, 7 nothing. And, I mean, that was straight away center. Uh, he got all of that one. Yeah, he got every piece of that one. He knew it off the bat, too, it seemed. Pretty now, when, confident when you, jog. When you barrel the whole ball like that, it's tough to keep that in the park. And it was, yeah, I mean, judging based on the signs, I would say that's about 395 feet. Yeah, that ball's crushed. That was a, that was a big time jam. And it's a solo home run for Eli Stewart. And that is exactly what the doctor ordered if you are Central Michigan. That is his second homer of the season. And the lead is 7 nothing now for the Chips. And that one is inside for Weber, who again, I mean, really, that's his first, that's his first major mistake. He yeah. really hadn't put much wrong until then. It's more or less just leaving that pitch out over the plate. He's yep. Going to get taken advantage of eventually. Yeah, at this level, you know, most, most of these players have the power to, to get the ball far. And, you know, again, from the nine spot, yeah. Eli Stewart, Doing the business for the chips. I mean, he's you know he's he's shown he's got the capability. I mean, that's that'll be his fifteenth RBI this season. That is hit hardly to short. Throw over and play is made. So two outs now. Nice smooth play there from Nelson over at shortstop. Westenfeld now back into the box. You talked about his size earlier. He's a yeah. big dude in that box. He is a big guy. I mean, he is he's shown the capability and really hasn't swung the bat all that much today. He's got two walks, grounded out to third. That one is hit sharply down the right field line, but foul. Yeah, definitely the most physically imposing player <laughs> on the central certainly player. He's if I had the ballpark around six three, six four. You know, that's, and, and that changes how you approach a player. Oh. When you think about the physicality as the one two comes in, that's hit hard into center, shallow center, and it'll drop for a fair ball. A little bit of a kind of a bloop single almost. It was well over the heads of any of the, uh, any of the infielders, but far too shallow for any of the outfielders to make a play. It's that little sweet spot that you tend to find in those base hits, and, well, that's back-to-back. Or no, excuse me, not back-to-back. -back. That's two hits out of three after the home run. And Westenfeld is aboard for the first time hitting today, third time on the base pass. And that brings Donahue up to the plate. He hits one. That'll be foul. That'll head out across into the now beginning to blossom cherry blossoms that are over there that mm -hmm. line that street, the famous blossoms on Athens. This guy, the most dangerous hitter of the bunch coming yeah. in this weekend. He hits one sharply. This will be an easy play in the end for J.R. Nelson over at shortstop. So the Bobcats escape further damage but surrender a big shot courtesy of Eli Stewart. Hit a dead straightaway home run into right or left center and padded the Central Michigan lead up to seven. It is a 7 nothing lead for the Chips. And Waters is coming back out for the six. We'll be right back. You're listening to Ohio Baseball on Ohio Bobcat TV.
Back at Bob Wren for the sixth inning. Bobcats going to work offensively and into the game now it is number 24, Cawthorn at the plate. And let me tell you, Eli Stewart, we talked about an MVP of the weekend and we talked about how Mikey Murphy would be in the front running spot. Stewart's not too far behind him. He's getting up there as this one is grounded to second and the play is made over there by Dardis. So quick out on the board for the Bobcats. Eli Stewart had a triple yesterday in that 6-1 to one game that the Chips were able to win. And now today with the padding home run shot, his second of the year, to give the 7-0 lead. The Bobcats have a lot of work to do. They want to get back into this game. Yeah, it's been timely hitting, aggressive swinging early on for the Chips. They've found their ways. Looks like we're getting a pinch hitter here for the Bobcats. Yeah. It is Trenton Neuer coming into the game. Bobcats need a spark. Can Neuer provide it? He has been one of the players that the Bobcats have looked to rely on in these sort of spots. He's got a 250 average. It's just his seventh appearance of the season. He hits this one hard in the air to right field. Underneath it is Donahue, and he makes the play. Uh, two quick outs posted by Central Michigan. That'll be a fly out for Neuer. And he replaced Gill, the pinch hitter. DH for well, DH. Yeah, DH, so he'll, he won't even have to see the field. He'll just head right back to the dugout until he has to come back up to the plate. Now Adams is back up at the plate. Adams... It's been a little bit of a struggle at the plate this year for him. Just 188 batting average. Almost the opposite of what Danny Westenfeld provides. Adams, much shorter guy out there. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that, that's kind of the business. That's the interesting thing about baseball, and you think about this a lot as a, you know, you, you watch a guy like Aaron Judge, right, who's 6'7", who's towers in that box, right, and he does, sometimes he gets some of those low strike calls against him because he's such a big presence in that box. Yeah. And, you know, it, it changes how umpires look at, at players. You know, you, the zone might be a little different here for Adams than it was for Westenfeld in the last inning. Yeah, it's like comparing an Aaron Judge to a Jose Altuve. <laughs> yeah. <I mean. laughs> hey, look, both of those players are, are, are great in their own ways. As there's a four-pitch walk worked by Adams. So the Bobcats get a base runner aboard with two outs. And that'll bring up Mancino back to the top with that bright orange bat. And the Bobcats need to find something here. And, I mean, it, it, it's just been a sparkler so far from Evan Waters. Five and two-thirds innings pitched, just three hits, six strikeouts, three walks. This one is hit hard into right center, and that is a base hit. Rounding second and heading for third. And no, no, they held it up. They, I, I thought he might go home for a second, which I think would have probably put him out. But Adams holds up at third, so Bobcats have runners on the corners. Nice piece of hitting there for Mancino. That's his first hit of the day. He is now one for three with a walk. Yeah, that was a sharply hit ball. Very well hit. Good fielding there, and I think I think that might be it. Yeah, for they got waters, a guy in the pen as well. So. Which, I mean, you really just have to tip your cap here. It's been a heck of an outing. You know, he'll leave with currently no runs allowed. He does. He will be responsible for the two runners that are on board right now. Well, actually, I don't know. if they're. I think they might let him finish this inning out. This is just a mound visit. There was no point at the bullpen. No, I don't a, believe. There's a few guys up. There, the there, are, there is action in that, in that Central Michigan bullpen. You're very right. But I don't know if they're going to go for the change here. They might let him fish out. He's at 82 pitches right now. Could also be a bit of a stall attempt, try and let those guys get warm. Let them get warm. You know, just let, you know, kind of the first time in a couple innings now that Waters has looked a little shaky. Yeah. Just give him a chance to catch his breath. I think you're right, though. I think it's just a confidence booster here. Hey, let's go finish this inning out. Give him six solid. You got Quinn Konizuski warming up in the bullpen right now. He's appeared in eight games so far this season. We'll see if we see him shortly. But Waters will finish this out, and he's got a tough matchup here in J.R. Nelson. Nelson 
has a couple of singles, very different singles, but a couple of singles to his <laughs> name today. And this is a big spot. Runners on the corners. And that is way outside, and that gets away. In to score is Adams, and the Bobcats are on the board. 7-1 to one is the score now. Adams with alertness on the base paths, and the Bobcats get a run. Yeah, that's, a, that's more of a confidence run almost more than it is on the scoreboard. I see the Bobcats put one up. Gives you a little bit of life. Yeah, it gives you just, just that little bit of a chance. And then, you know, if you could get J.R. Nelson on here, you got Anthel in the box. You know how powerful he is. And that is outside and dropped again. That was two back-to-back -back pitches there. Be interesting to see if, if, if Nelson does get on base here, what the Central Michigan strategy is. Will they pull Waters? You know, you have to face Antle. Do you want a fresh pitcher facing Antle? Yeah, that's a tough way to it, come out It is a bit. tough call. <laughs> Nelson hits this one hard and foul back over our heads. It's a tough guy to come in and face Very. right off the rip. Very. So the count is now two and one for J.R. Nelson. That one is just a bit outside. So three and one the count. Hitters count for J.R. Nelson. We'll see how aggressive he gets here with two outs for the Bobcats, this little two-out rally. You know, it was an easy first two outs, and now the Bobcats have found a little bit of life here in this inning. And that's high. It's a great so take it's a there. walk, really good take. Yeah, you're right with that high fastball. We talked about that a little bit earlier on. And now Gideon Antle comes to the plate with a chance to get the Bobcats back in the game. First and second here for Ohio. Mancino is on fir or on second. J.R. Nelson is on first, and Gideon Antle. This is if the Bobcats wanted a guy to be at the plate. Yeah. This is probably who Craig Moore would have picked. And this is a big at-bat. Waters deals. This one is hit hard in the air in right field, coming in his center to grab that is Jake Brill. And Waters gets out of the jam, but not before allowing the first run he's allowed today on a wild pitch. Billy Adams finally gets something on the board for the Bobcats. The lead is cut to six. It is a seven to one game. We'll be back at Bob Brent. Pens are active for both teams as we're back here at Bob Wren Stadium. Ethan Sargent, Wes Minky, Ellie Meltzler down on the sidelines. Glad you're joining us here on this March Sunday afternoon. That is a pop fly in the air. Sun might be into this a little bit. It definitely affected, it definitely affected the, the play there from A.J. Rouch. He, he was able to catch the ball. He had to shield. You know, it is part of the game. you got to shield your eyes, and he did a good job there of just getting under it. And that is a quick out for the Bobcats and for Zach Weber, who really, apart from one pitch, has been very, very solid for Ohio. Yeah, he's done a great job commanding the strike zone, especially that outside zone. He's worked a lot of that off-speed pitch. That's another one. Really good low pitch there. Got the swing from 
Mikey Murphy. There's another strike. So two quick strikes on Murphy. Murphy is one for three, two strikeouts, and then, of course, that huge hit back in the second, that bases clearing double that put three runs on the board. Yeah, talk about a guy the Bobcats want to avoid here. Yeah. And that's just a bit low. So count is one and two for the chips and for Murphy. Here comes the one, two. Hit sharply foul right into the Ohio dugout. See three fastballs in a row there. I got to assume some off-speed pitches are coming here. Maybe looks to take that off-speed away again, low and away as he's hit so well so far today. That's it. Nope, he missed it. I thought he got a tip. <laughs> he did not. I thought they were going to um, – might have been a foul ball. There was not. So that is another strikeout for Weber. That's his fourth of the day. And Murphy will head back to the dugout. And up to the plate will step Spencer Verberg, the catcher. And he's got one hit on the day as well as a walk to go with a strikeout. One for two. And he'll come to the plate here with two outs. He'll hit this towards third. That'll roll foul. Of course, we're just four days, five days away from the start of the Major League Baseball season. Opening day is Thursday. I'm sure Cincinnati will be bouncing. Of course, the great opening day tradition down there, a great American ballpark, should be a good season for the Reds, expecting a jump for them after the signings that they've made. There's a swing and a miss. You just hope, um, you just hope Matt McLean is healthy. Yeah. That's the big thing for the Reds. If they could find a way to avoid the injury bug, yeah. it would be it has not been a, It has not been a great spring training in that <laughs> department for the Reds. Not at all. Of course, it's just been, it's been an interesting time in baseball with the story about Shohei Otani and the, the, uh, the, the, the bookmaker and the, um, his interpreter. That's, that was something. I couldn't, I couldn't believe what I was hearing when I read <laughs> that story. As that pitch is a little bit off speed and inside. So two and two the count now. But again, it is that time of the year, right, where you got you got March Madness going on. You got baseball about to start here, professional baseball. NCAA baseball's been rolling now for, you know, a few days. It's been a or, or, or a while. You know, you get you get games going as early as late February. And it's it's good to see. I mean, there's there's a lot of action going on today, some ranked matchups. As there is strike three. Perfect location there from Weber. Yeah, Weber is dealing for the Cats. Five strikeouts on the day, just one earned run. That long ball he allowed in the last inning, and he has done a great job as the relief in this matchup. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, the Bobcats go back to work in the top of the seventh, trying to make things happen. You're listening to Ohio Baseball on Ohio Bobcat TV.
back at Bob Wren. Evan Waters' day is done, and what a day it was. He had a fantastic outing, six full innings, four hits, one run allowed, four walks, and six strikeouts on 87 pitches. So, heck of a job by Evan Waters to set his team up for success. Coming in to replace him is Quinn Konizuski. He's got an 8.49 ERA. He's pitched in eight games this year. 11.2 innings pitch, 11 and two thirds. He's allowed 12 hits and 11 earned runs, 17 walks to 10 strikeouts on the year. So big spot here. He's got to just limit the Bobcats. Another lefty as well, just something to monitor. It's been the <laughs> been the kryptonite for Ohio yeah. this weekend of those lefty pitchers. So I think that might be part of the thought process when bringing in a guy like Konizeski. Here comes the Allspad pitch. He's got an interesting throwing motion. Yeah. You notice that. It's a... He's got a little bit of a kick in the front. It's kind of almost a sidearm. Yeah, he drops that arm slide, yeah. arm slot down a little bit there. And there's the 3-1 in his first pitch, or his first batter is his 18th walk of the season. I'll tell you what, sometimes it's really hard, especially coming from that left side. It's hard to pick up a lower arm slot like that. And yeah. Especially with off-speed stuff. If it's got movement, it's very, very hard to catch up to and tag on that one. Well, if you're Ohio, that's exactly how you would have wanted to start the inning. That is inside. 1-0. The Bobcats get a base runner on, and we know how quick Roush is. He is fully capable of making problems on the base paths. Four stolen bases on the season. Six attempts. Wouldn't be surprised if he tried something here. He's got a healthy lead off of that bag. 1-1 one one the count. Finally, Really needed one there, Konizeski, on that pitch. And he'll check the runner back to first base. It's so funny to see sometimes. Sometimes lefties have real quick moves. Sometimes they're real late and delayed like that one. Yeah. Just keeping Roush on us. Again, they're all, they're, Central Michigan's aware of the speed Roush possesses. Here comes a 1-1. One, one. It's hit sharply and by the second baseman. Roush is rounding second and heading for third, and he will slide in. And the Bobcats are in business here in the top of the seventh. And there's a nice piece of uh, hitting, a nice single from Bryce Smith. Yeah, that thing was laced down in the right field. Yeah, just uh, ahead of the glove of Dardis. And quickly, the Bobcats may reignite their interest in this contest. That's low, ball one. Nick Dolan has had his opportunities today. It hasn't always gone his way, but he's got another shot here. This ball is hit hard into right center. Coming onto it is both Donahue and the center fielder Brill. Donahue makes the play, but that'll be a sacrifice fly. Roush comes home. And that is a run. Dolan will get the RBI. Bobcats cut into the lead again. It is now 7-2 to two, Central Michigan. You see that exchange of information there between Dolan and Cawther, a new pitcher. Yep. Obviously what are the tendencies? Guys. How do you do it? Yeah. This is hit hard in the air and back into foul territory. Cawthorn at the plate, swings hard again and fouls again. The lefty, this is this is where you're looking to get, get that advantage here when you got the lefty on lefty matchup. You, you, you're, I believe the only lefty in Ohio's lineup is Cawthorn, at least for the time being. Bryce Smith also. But Smith, Smith, yes. Already saw him go through. Just had that nice hit as well. Yeah. So he took advantage. There's a punch out looking just on the outside corner. That's a big strikeout when Konoseski needed it. So now Newer is back at the plate. He had that fly out when he pinch hit for Taylor Gill a couple innings ago. And that is outside, ball one. We've gotten the chance to see a lot of Trent Neuer ball 
with the Copperheads yeah, last season again this year with the Bobcats. So And he's back with the Copperheads, I believe, is, yep. next season. This is hit softly towards second. Dardis makes the play. And once again, Central Michigan limit the damage. 7-2 to two is the score. Bobcats put another on the board. Roush finds his way around the bases and gets home on the sacrifice fly from Nick Dolan. It's time to stretch. We're in the seventh inning stretch here at Bob Wren. We'll see you when we get back. You're listening to Ohio Baseball on Ohio Bobcat TV. Back at Bob Wren, 7-2 is the lead for Central Michigan. Ohio's made some adjustments on the defensive side for a little bit more on the vibes from the Ohio dugout. We check in with our sideline reporter, Ellie Metzler. Ellie? Absolutely, Ethan. Looking at Ohio's defense so far today, they've allowed CMU seven runs. After yesterday's game where Ohio only let them get three runs, I asked Coach Moore how he plans to keep that momentum that the defense had going into the series finale. Coach told me the defense needs to come ready tomorrow. They need to be ready to work during pregame. He also told them don't go through the motions. Finally, he said as a coaching staff, we have to make sure that we stay on top of the guys and don't let them get complacent. Although that attitude seemed to be lacking in the early innings of this game, Ohio's defense held the Chippewas to zero hits and zero runs in the bottom of the sixth. Yeah, it's a good point about that complacency aspect where, you know, in, in baseball, you can, it's very easy to, like you said, go through the motions. It's very easy to make that assumption and just go straight back and, you know, just do your warm up and then, oh, you got to play. But I think it's important that Craig, Craig Moore mentions that aspect of being ready and being on top of things at all times. And yeah, the Bobcats, it, it didn't really seem like, I'm not, they, they definitely weren't not ready. That, that's not what I'm saying. It's just, you know, it, you have to be able to be 100%, 110% for every game. And that's a great point. As the Bobcats now will look to go back to work. Got a strikeout there on that last at bat. Webb, he kind of, while well, Ellie was doing the sideline report, kind of seemed like he hit a ball off his foot, which yeah. never, never, <laughs> never fun. If you've played any level of baseball, you know that that is a tough, tough pain to experience. Especially in cold weather. Oh, and <laughs> with the cold and with all that, yeah, it, it's just not great circumstances. But Chips go back to work here in the bottom of the seventh. That ball is hit foul. And that is Dardis who made the play there at the end of the inning. See some action down there in the Ohio bullpen. Yeah, you, and, A couple and guys getting loose. I think, I don't think Craig Moore could have asked for much more from, <laughs> from Zach Weber. He has been really good. I mean, obviously the one pitch, he gave up the home run, but four and a third innings, four hits, two walks, six strikeouts. He's been very good, and he's helped the Bobcats stick around in this game. Without him, it could have been a lot worse for sure. Yeah, he's about, about as good as Craig Moore could have asked for coming out of that pen. Slowed down the tempo as well, played at his pace. 
Ooh, wow. And that's just, I think it was just inside. It was a close one, though. Very close. It looked like, definitely looked like Cawthron thought it was strike three because he went right over and tagged. And tagged Artis. But we play on ball three. Three and two the count. Here's the payoff pitch. Cut on hard and foul. Weber steadies and readies on the mound. Here is the 3 2. Outside, or no, inside, excuse me, ball four. Dardis takes his base. It's a good plate appearance there. Yep. Fends off a couple inside pitches. Works to get his pitch. Hammers it into left field, but foul, and then able to lay off pitch that's. Not very close to the zone. And there's, it's a tough, like, you know, we talked about that high, how hard it is to lay off those high pitches because, you know, you, you can really, if you don't lay off and you get contact, you can put some real power on those. Yeah. And, you know, that's where those home run balls could potentially be. But that one was a little bit too far inside, I think, for, for Dardis to really want to have a hack at it. So, and I think when you make that assumption, you're like, all right, well, we could probably go there. This is a bunt laid down. Nope. It's an out. Yeah. Are they, are they saying it's the double so touch? It touch? Yeah, it touched yeah. him in fair territory. Yeah, that is an out. So a, a slight mistake there. That was Stewart, who, of course, had that home run in the last plate appearance. And, yeah, I, I think it, it, it must have touched him twice. And I think that that's what Cawthorn was, was kind of protesting with the umpire with. And, well, he agreed. <laughs> so now Brill is back up to the plate. This is plate appearance number four. Or excuse me, no, this is plate appearance number five for Jake Brill. Just a little bit low. Nice frame job there from Cawthorn trying to steal a strike, but yep. can't get away with it. It's one of those things where obviously there's the big debate right now in Major League Baseball over, you know, with umpiring and, <laughs> and robot umps. And, and I think the big thing is I don't know if you'd find many catchers that would agree with you just because framing is such a, a – Consistent art. I mean, as as somebody who's watched the Yankees for a long time, Jose Trevino is unbelievable <laughs> at it yeah. because he, you know, that it's not an easy motion. It is something as that is ripped hard into left field, but a foul. It's not an easy motion, but it's something that is absolutely part of the game. And yeah. it's something where you know, if, if you do end up implementing ro robotic umpires, it's going to take that part away. You can't fool the robot. So we'll see what they what Major League decides to do. I think for now they're going to stick with with the people. It's an art, but it's also, in a sense, uh, it takes a lot of, I guess, knowledge. You gotta, oh, you gotta, you gotta set up how you frame a pitch, and the catchers that are the best at it are mm -hmm. very, very talented. Oh yeah, and I mean, I've been—I remember Trevino. He did it in New York, but he did it for for Texas for a long time, yeah. and it's the same thing. There's a nice pitch on the outside corner for strike two, two and two. The count here to Brill, the leadoff hitter. It's something where, again, like you said, it is a learned art. It is yeah. something where you practice that for hours. You take pitches for hours just practicing that motion. As that was just, just keeping Dardis on us over there at first base. Had him scrambling back. Now he reclaims his about three, four step lead. Here comes the 2 2. It is hit towards short, picked up, and the play is made. Nelson. He's had some smooth plays over there today at shortstop. He's been fairly consistent, had that, um, the one go off his glove in the first, and since then he has been on it. Bobcats once again put up a zero. That's two straight shutout innings for the Cats, and they'll go to work down five as we head to the top of the eighth inning. You're listening to Ohio Baseball on Ohio Bobcat TV.
Bobcats going back to work on offense, and they've got two innings to try and make a comeback here, down 7-2 to two against Central Michigan. Of course, again, if you're just joining us, the Bobcats batting in the top half because technically they're on the road. This game, the series was meant to be played up in Mount Pleasant, but due to inclement weather up in Michigan, this is hit hard into left field, but that is a foul ball. As I was saying, it's, it's a tough one because up in Michigan, it's snowing. I think they got about six inches of snow up in Mount Pleasant. That's not baseball weather. You can't. <laughs> as cool as that might be to see, see like, you know, the white snow on a baseball. Whoa. That one had Adams chasing. He was way out of the zone there. I think he kind of made up his mind that he was swinging at that. <laughs> he didn't get it, and Konizeski gets his second strikeout. So, of course, this series was meant to be played up in Mount Pleasant. It is now down here in Athens, but Central remains the home team. So the Bobcats, even though they're on their home field, they're batting at the top here. So, you know, we may not have to play a bottom of the ninth if the score stays this way. And that one's outside. 2-0 and oh the count here. We're back at the top for the Bobcats as well. Mancino is at the plate. He singled in his last at bat. Had a walk in the fourth and then a couple of ground outs before that. So one for three on the day for him. Still got that bright highlighter orange bat too. Yeah, it's a. I mean, you we, you know there are a lot of unique bats, and that <laughs> one that one's up there. And that one is in there. Good pitch on the three zero. Just you know, nice off speed. Get it in the get it in the zone when you have to. Here comes the three one. That's outside ball four. So second walk of the day for Mancino. The right fielder is on at first. And now J.R. Nelson will step to the plate. I'll tell you what, Mancino's done a great job this entire game of working counts. He, not, he not, I agree. Not in the sense of drawing walks entirely. Is obviously, it's not his purpose when he goes up there to go hit, but making sure that he sees the pitch all the way in. He's done a fantastic job of that today. And Nelson's two for three. Walked in his last plate appearance. There's a strike on the inside corner to Nelson. So 0-1 is the count. Konizuski has been solid since he came in. Allowed, Did allow the one earned run, but only allowed one hit. He now is about to throw his 20th pitch of the outing. This one is hit high in the air, shallow right field, Oncoming is Donahue, and he makes the play. So two outs now for the Bobcats, as that one was popped up by Nelson, and now Antle comes to the plate. There's ever a time to step up and show your power. It's yeah, the Bobcats right need now. it. The Bobcats need it bad. Antle is one for three on the day. He's flown out a couple of times, had a single back in the first inning. Walked in the third. This one is hit hard into center field. Going back is Brill. It's shallow. He comes up and he makes the play. It's a couple now that Gideon has gotten a hold of, but Antle just couldn't quite get it over the Antle. <laughs> and the Bobcats are down to their final frame, down 7-2. to two. The Central Michigan Chippewas will be back at the plate next. You're listening to Ohio Baseball on Ohio Bobcat TV.
Pitching change here for the Bobcats in the bottom of the eighth inning. I think you have to give a shout-out to Zach Weber. He played very well. Five innings, four hits, one earned run, that big shot from Eli Stewart. Six strikeouts to three walks. Faced 29 batters, or excuse me, 21 batters through 69 total pitches. 39 of them were strikes. Can't ask for much more uh, from one of your key relievers, and Zach Weber did extremely well in replacing him into the game is Hudson Bonkel. He's got a 6.75 ERA on the season. This is will be his fifth appearance of the year. He's allowed eight hits, six earned runs, has six walks, and he's thrown seven strikeouts. I think the story of the day, when, when, you, when you look kind of at the stats and where things have gone wrong, there's one that jumps out for me as the story of today's matchup. Runners in scoring position, yeah. Bobcats 0 for 7. Michigan, or Central Michigan, 5 for 10. That'll do it. This one is going to be a tough play, and it gets through. That's a base hit for Westenfeld. It was going to be an extremely difficult play there, either at short or at second, and it just got it, found one of those spots. and Up the middle wasn't the fastest hit ball in the world, but it gets through. So the Bobcats down a base runner early in this inning as the chips get one on, and Donahue will step to the plate. He lays down a bunt. It's straight back to Bonkel. He will throw it over, and, well, I imagine Donahue did his job there. He advanced <laughs> the runner. And then Prout back to the plate. He started things off for the Chips with that RBI single back in the first inning. He's been a dangerous at-bat all day. Empires stop play for a second. Now it's back. I think it might have been the pitch clock wasn't working. Here's the pitch, just a bit outside. Ball one. You got the left-handed hitter against the right-handed Bonkel. There's a strike. Good pitch. Had some late movement there as well. Bonkel's a quick mover. He is. He he is operating with some efficiency. I mean, if you if you look at the pitch clock, just started 20, 19, 18, <laughs> 17, 16. He kind of had a look out of it. Yeah, I mean, under seven seconds. And there's strike three. So I mean quickly that, sits him down. <laughs> that might be a world record strikeout. That was that was very quick. And first strikeout of the day for Bonkel. Second out on the board for Ohio. As Mikey Murphy comes back to the plate for his fifth appearance. He has struck out three times today, but you forget about that when you remember the big hit he had back in the second, that bases clearing double to looking, give Central that 5 nothing lead at the time. Looking to not have that golden sombrero here. Yeah. Is it really a golden sombrero, though, if you have three RBIs? <laughs> Here's a strike. In the top of the zone, there was we, we mentioned that aggressiveness with the high fastballs. There it was with Murphy. He was he saw something that he liked, and he attacked it. This one is hit high in the air, a mile in the air. A couple of Bobcats running onto it. Antel runs onto it, and he makes the play. So the Bobcats put up a zero, but they're down to their final frame. You need five runs here in the top of the ninth. Can the Bobcats make something happen late on? against Central Michigan. We'll be back. You're listening to Ohio Baseball on Ohio Bobcat TV.
Final frame here from Athens. Bobcats trail seven to two. They need five runs here in the top of the ninth to keep this game alive. And it starts with their number four hitter, cleanup spot for A.J. Roush, who's had an eventful day for sure. Had that walk where he did score in the seventh. And then he scored. He actually got on base after striking out in the fifth. That drop ball. That was after that egregious non-fair <laughs> call, which was very, very bad. Um, so now he's back at the plate here, quickly down 0-2. Konizuski's been pretty solid since he's came in. And he gets Roush swinging. Strikeout number three. Bobcats are down to their final two outs. Yeah, that was a tough at bat there for A.J. Roush. Yeah, he chased back-to-back -back outside pitches. I mean, as a right-handed hitter going against going against the lefty, he chased a couple on the far side. That one gets away. Doesn't matter. 1-0 and is the count now. I think that arm slot is so hard to get used to. It is tough. After what you've seen the entire day from Waters, then you see another lefty come in, and <laughs> it's just a completely is, different yeah. arm Ooh, slot. Ooh, that was very inside. Good Move by Bryce to get out the way. So Bryce Smith back at the plate. He had a single in his last plate appearance. Walked in the third. Was hit in the first, so he is one for two on the day. Bobcats, two runs on five hits and one error. Central, seven runs on nine hits and no errors. And that is a walk, so the Bobcats get their... First base runner here in the bottom of the ninth, or excuse me, top of the ninth. <laughs> His home and away stuff. Still yeah, tricky. it's 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 <laughs> it's it's flippy. It's flippy. Now you got Dolan at the plate. He's been at the plate in some big spots today, and he'll get an opportunity here to have a swing in the top of the ninth inning. Bobcats got to find something. Got to get a little bit of momentum. Can Dolan be the man to provide the spark? That is hit hard into left up, field. Get up. Oh, and it's a nice play out there in left. Mikey Murphy going out there, making a nice defensive play. Had a long way to go. It was in that far corner. You see the the, the token of appreciation there from Konizuski, the, the hand up there. And that was an earned one because that's not an easy play out in left. That ball's drilled down yep. the line there. Impressive play by Murphy. Yeah, could have saved a run or two there with that play. Now the Bobcats down to their final out. There is strike one. This is Cawthron at the plate. Hard hit, and that's a base hit for Cawthron. Nice and simple there. Nice piece of hitting. The line moving. Yep. And now, Newer back in. He'll have a third. Oh. Are they going to pinch hit here? He was motioned back towards the dugout. I think they might be pinch hitting here. Yeah, I, I, I believe they are just based on the way Craig Moore's got a lineup card out. Newer was all ready to go out there and hit. <laughs> And now they're going to send a different batter out there. Let's see who they've got. Looks like, is that number 20? Well, there is no number 20, so it can't be number 20. It's number 29. 29. That would be Clay Cutter coming into the game. He's got a 754 OPS. This will be his seventh appearance of the year. 6 611 on base percentage. It's out and away. I mean, the, the average isn't great, just 143, but I think that they just want a base runner here. I think that's that what OBP the OBP will play. That's what <laughs> the that's what the decision was. So you're trying to get a base runner on. Nice and that's there. why 2 and 0. I think I I think here at this point he he's you're really just looking to work that walk. Don't think you're going to see a bat swing here unless he gets something real simple over the middle. 
And even that he might not swing on. Here comes the 2-0. That is cut on. It was over the middle. So the count goes to 2-1. and one. Something we don't talk about a lot, but goes really unnoticed by many people is that performance tonight from Spencer Burberg behind the dish. He is Yeah, he's been solid. This is hit well. sharply up the middle, over to short, and that will do it. Central take two of three at home? I guess they take two <laughs> of three from Ohio in this technical home series, and they win this one seven to two. And the Bobcats will regroup and refresh as they look ahead. Bobcats fall to 8-13, and 4-5 and five in the conference. What are your thoughts, Wes, on what was a, in the end, fairly simple baseball game, but some really good pieces of hitting and pitching on the day? Yeah, I'd say key hitting is, has to be the, the number one takeaway for today. Uh, the Chippewas did it with men on and, and men in score position. They were able to find bat and ball and uh, get a guy in. Bobcats really unable to do that for a large majority of this game. Took till closer to the end of the game. Uh, they finally started to get some guys to come in on, on some nice hits, but untimely hitting uh, and inability to string hits together for the Bobcats is really, really what cost them in this one. Yeah, I mean, that, that, running, that runners in scoring position, it just went up. It was, I believe it was 0 for 7. Now it might be 0 for 8 after that. Um, that'll, yeah, it, it is. I mean, 5 for 12 for Central Michigan. Um, 0 for 8 for Ohio, I think tells you most of the story. I think if you look at this game as a whole, you've got uh, Waters, what a great pitching performance from him. Uh, six strong innings, just one earned run. Did a very, very good job. And then you, I think you also have to give a, a word to Koseski as well, coming in and, and doing a very, I mean, it was a tough act to yeah. follow, but he did a great job. And anytime you only use two pitchers in a game, you're, you're thrilled. And I'm sure that it will be a happy bus ride home back to Mount Pleasant for the Chippewas. Bobcats will be back in action this week. They will stay home uh, on Tuesday. They got a fun little matchup, a little Ohio battle against the Dayton Flyers on Tuesday. That's at four right here at Bob Wren. And then on Thursday, they've got a weekend series over at Ball State in Muncie. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. 3 p.m. Thursday, Friday and Saturday at 1 p.m. That game will be out in Muncie. Then they come back to Bob Wren, uh, I believe, two weekends from now. Yeah, two weekends. They'll be back taking on Western Michigan in a three-game set against the Broncos. It's going to just about wrap things up for everybody on our great crew today. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, enjoy the beauty of March. Go tune in to March Madness. Thanks so much for joining us for Ellie Metzler, for Wes Minky, I've been Ethan Sargent. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your weekend.